just so I don't forget. Okay. Great. And Alyssa, and, and just if people are having tech issues, please chat with me privately. Um, I see Andre Lowe, um, you can't hear. So, um, so Andre, let's chat let's privately. Chat pri Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, and who was that talking? That was Jennifer Wetham. I'll introduce everybody here in just a minute. Jerry, is that you? That is me. Hi, it Jerry. Me. Hi, Jerry Lewis from CBC. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So, Andy, I have to compliment you before we get started. I don't know whatever magic your help desk ticket or whatever you sent in... Um, worked for us, but um, we now have the permission to show Zoom in Zoom. I was thrilled to discover that last night about um, 1 a.m. when I was working on how are we going to do this. So um, I was very pleased that I don't have to do a bunch of slides with um, screenshots today, so that was awesome. And um, I'm just going to get to my presentation here. All right, my computer seems to be going just a little bit slow. All right, let me do present mode. Hi, uh, real quick before you start, I just yeah. came in. Hi, my name is Loretta Manley from Clover Park Technical College. Hi, Loretta. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Hope you're doing well too. What's your question today? I am. Um, I teach computers and I want to use Zoom throughout since we're going to be online for a while. Can I do a Zoom and go right into Word and just actually present um, lessons um, as if I was in a classroom setting? Um, yeah, and you'll get a taste of that as we're going through here. Okay, great. So, um, okay. Hi, so, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay, All right, so right off the bat, I am having um, a small technical issue here. Okay. okay. I'm not sure why it's not liking my first slide for some reason. I don't know how to use that. Okay, well, I'm not going to linger here. It's not loading my first slide. This is uh, Learn to Zoom. I am Alyssa Sells, and I'm just going to go ahead and skip over to my um, She's doing that. next slide. And if we could all keep our mics muted, please, so that there's not background noise, that'd be great. We'll talk about mics in just a minute. I've got some co-hosts with me here today who are going to help me manage cameras and mics. And um, you can contact me if you have questions about anything. I'm acells at sbctc.edu. And um, I'm joined today by Jennifer Wetham from SBCTC. Some of you may know her. We've got Andy Duckworth here also from our agency. And Monique Belair is also joining us from our agency and they're all gonna help me out. Uh, I think that there are probably a few in the audience who uh, have a lot of Zoom skills who have tuned in to help as well. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look through the list to see who you all were. I know Jerry uh, Lewis from CBC is here as well and said he help answer questions. So um, just thank you everybody for being here and again thank you to Andy for getting the help desk ticket submitted that allowed us to be able to uh, do a full live demo of Zoom and Zoom up until yesterday. I didn't think we were going to be able to do that so it should be a lot easier um, because I'll be able to show you actually what I'm doing as I'm doing it. All right. Um, Let's see, before we get going, uh, I just want to make sure that anyone who wants to use the captions can find those. So in your toolbar that's pictured here, it runs horizontally across the bottom of your screen and sometimes you need to scroll your mouse over the bottom of the screen for that to pop up. There is a closed caption um, icon there. It's a little white box with CC in it. If you'd like to view the captions as we are going, um, please go ahead and open that up. So those are there. I've just got a couple of housekeeping things and then we'll get into the demo. 
Okay, so how to find Zoom help. And actually, I should have given my co-hosts um, a link to this, and my, my apologies for that. We were kind of distracted testing some other things before we started. So let me just read this list um, or this to you, and then when I pop back into Zoom, I'll paste these in for everyone. Okay, so um, the Zoom Help Center is at http colon slash slash bit.ly slash zoom with a capital Z dash help with a capital H. And I'm going to give you one other link here on the next slide. If you prefer to navigate without using your mouse, Zoom does have some hotkeys and shortcuts. And those can also be found at the, uh, the bit.ly link that is on the screen now. It's http colon slash slash bit.ly slash Zoom with a capital Z, shortcuts with a capital S. All right, this is probably the burning question most of you have before we're getting started is, is this being recorded and how can I find the webinar recording? Uh, so yes, we are recording. So just so you know, um, we do have the recording feature running right now. I've already started that. And um, I have started this course design resources document. And rather than link you to a bunch of different things, I'm putting all of my links and things in here. So. Um, this is where you're going to be able to find a link to the recording and then I've got a bunch of other um, learn to zoom resources put together for you and a little later I will show you where that document is and how to use it but for now um, the URL is http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash course with a capital C design with a capital D and resources with a capital R. And we will get these um, URLs into the chat here for you shortly. All right, so um, our objective today is to explore and practice some Zoom features. And we're gonna do that while we learn to Zoom. So parts of this I'm going to be demoing, parts of it we're going to be doing a few little activities I have planned using some of the features in Zoom, and um, at certain points I may even stop and ask for some volunteers who might want to um, take over and possibly share their screen and give a few things some practice. So um, do be prepared to uh, watch, listen, and um, do because we are going to be using the features that we're talking about. I'm not just going to talk about them, we're actually going to use them. Okay, um, before I get into what is Zoom, let me just talk about a little bit of um, quick meeting etiquette. Uh, as Jennifer was mentioning earlier, and I'm not sure if everyone was logged in at that point, we are going to keep our cameras and mics muted, except for whoever is talking at that time. Uh, that will help us cut down on background noise. And as I mentioned, I do have my co-hosts here with me today, and they're gonna help manage that. So if you're having trouble muting your mic or unmuting, or your camera, they're gonna be behind the scenes while I'm talking, kind of helping to manage those pieces. And we are gonna learn how to do our cameras and how to do our mics here in just a minute. Um, but just for now, if we could leave everything muted, that would be fantastic. And I'm gonna leave my camera off for the majority of the webinar, um, not because I don't want you to see me, but just because um, it makes um, my computer run smoother if I'm not trying to run my video at the same time. All right, Jen, do we have, or Monique, do we have any questions in the chat that need to get addressed before we get going? Um, we do have one person asked um, about if there will be time for questions. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> and if this will be repeated? I'm not sure I'm going to repeat this. Um, what we're doing right now is I'm going to record this and then I'll send it out for captioning and we'll have the recording available for anybody who uh, wants to rewatch it. But I was thinking maybe uh, I might run some smaller sessions that people could just pop in to practice specific tools. I haven't really decided yet, um, but as of right now, there are no plans to repeat this particular presentation. All right, and we do have one specific question about if the live captioning was automatic 
And I, I, I think, I, and so I've been chatting with this person privately, but um, Andy, while you're on the phone, I think, I think people are like, maybe that, maybe the live captioning is something we could talk about. Um, I know that there's kind of a workaround. So, but I, I think we should just do basics right now. Um, yeah, um, we did hire a captioning company. We have a contract um, with a company that provides transcription services for us. So we do have um, someone specifically here to type those for us. Um, you can assign a captioner um, from within someone in the meeting if you would like. And then also depending on which tools you're using, there are ways to add um, captioning um, like auto-generated captions to uh, Google Docs and um, also in um, Microsoft um, Office. I can't remember what it's called, but both of those have um, features that you could um, potentially use as um, auto-captioning. Yes, and so maybe, yeah, so I, I, I sent a note to the person in the chat, and so okay. um, if other people are interested, just shoot me an email and I can address Great. that. Thanks. thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, thanks, Jen. All right. Um, let's dig into what is Zoom then. Um, Zoom is a video conferencing and web conferencing platform. It's used mostly for hosting live virtual events or meetings. Um, this can be used um, for like telecommuting like a lot of us are doing now and it can also be used um, with your students so it can be used definitely used for instruction which a lot of the faculty are going to be doing very soon i'm actually already a remote worker my um, office is in the state board is in olympia but my my actual workstation is my home office so i was already a remote worker and i have to say i think i use zoom every single day so it's a great tool it's got a lot of functionality and um, it has worked really well for my needs and I've used it for a variety of things. We, we host training and webinars and different things, but then I also just use it on a daily basis for meetings. And you'll get to learn what um, some of those different features and things are as we go. Okay, another burning question maybe for some of you is how do I get an account? So if you are college faculty or staff, you will need to contact your campus IT office. Please don't just go to Zoom and sign up for an account on your own. The free basic accounts Zoom is offering right now, it's fantastic that they're offering them, uh, but they are limited to 40 minute meetings and I think you're only allowed to have um, three people per meeting. And there is some form you can fill out to have that lifted, but it will just be a lot easier for you if you go through your IT office because they will issue you um, it's, it's a higher level account that we have access to right now. So please see your IT office. If you're here um, as SBCTC agency staff, um, you're gonna go ahead and contact our IT office as well. So all of this needs to go through IT. Okay, and then um, where to sign into your Zoom account? The URL for signing in is HTTPS colon slash slash zoom dot us slash sign in all in lowercase and i'm going to take you and show you um, where these um, items are here in just a minute but i just wanted to make sure that we had um we had that documented okay so um the first thing we're going to talk about is joining a meeting and I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the slides now because I want to come. Um, let's see, actually, no, because I can't show you signing into zoom because I'm already in here. So um, let us look at the slides real quick for this. Okay, so um, you clicked a URL in the invitation that I sent you and you went through some sort of process that had you maybe choose the application. It may have asked you to download something and then um, you probably had a little wheel that was spinning and said it was loading. And then you were asked if you wanted to join either by audio with your computer or by a phone call. And um, this is the tab for computer audio. And if you joined by computer audio, you went ahead and um, clicked that button. If you chose to um, join by phone, then you chose the other tab and then you dialed in and were asked to enter some information. 
And then you landed in a space that looked something like this, which is um, just the main room for um, Zoom. So this is where you land after you log in. All right, so I think that's the end of what I needed to show you in slides because everything else I'm gonna do live, yeah. Okay, so I do have some activities that we'll come back to in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. I'm just, um, I'm letting you see what I'm doing so that it's transparent and Jen, if you could confirm that you're seeing um, when I pop into Zoom, if you'll just confirm for me when I switch over that you're all seeing the Zoom window. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm going to close a few things down. Let me see. Want to get rid of my chat for just a second. And I'm going to get rid of participants for just a second. And the reason for that is because I'm going to show you how to get back to those here. Okay. All right. So um, I'm not sure why we're seeing um, Karen, but that's what's on our screen right now. And um, Alyssa, it's my fault. I didn't uh, stop her video. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. I'll that's do it. That's all right. No worries. No worries. <laughs> I'm actually not seeing her. I'm just seeing her name. So I think her video is stopped. Yeah, I, I pinned it to the top, so I have to figure out how to. Un oh, yeah. Okay. So if you could unpin her, that I would be I broke Zoom, everyone. I broke it. Oh, actually, I have the button. It says cancel the spotlight video. Okay. But I'm still seeing her name. But okay. Well, we'll just keep going here. Um, the first thing that you want to get familiar with in Zoom is the toolbar down at the bottom. And um, you can see messages of popping up. And um, we are going to test our audio first. My audio is, of course, on. And what I'd like, and I'd like you to do this with me as I'm talking so that you can test it. And then um, this is the part where we're going to use our mics and our cameras if we have them and I'm going to walk you through like what that looks like and then we'll turn those off before we go on to um, some other things. And then um, coming up I'm going to show you how to use some of the participant tools so that you know how to participate and um, you use the features in Zoom while we're um, together today. Okay so um, in the bottom left hand corner and I'm down, way down on the bottom on my toolbar. I have um, these little carrots. These, uh, they look like little up arrows. And I'm just gonna click the one by my audio and it's gonna pop up another menu and it's gonna give me some options. Uh, it's telling me that I'm using my Microsoft Life Chat headset. It's also telling me that that's my selected speaker. So I'm receiving audio and sending audio through my headset. But what I'd like you to do is click on um, the test speaker and microphone option. And don't worry, you're not gonna break anything and nobody's gonna see what you're doing. Uh, this is just so that you know how to test your audio and so you can advise students how to do that. Oh, and I see somebody has a camera on, which is fine. Um, and um, someone has figured out how to use the virtual background, so that's pretty cool. We'll get to that in just a second. All right, so this is the ringtone test, and I am getting the audio through my ringtone, and you're not, I don't think you should be hearing mine, but you should be seeing it flicker on the screen. I'm going to say yes, and then after that, it's going to ask me to um, speak and pause, and then Hey, Alyssa, can you hear me? Test. Oh, oh there we go. Sorry, Alyssa, I muted yeah. everyone and then okay. I unmuted you. So okay, that's keep going. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're still testing, so it's okay. Even if we have a little bit of background noise here, that's totally fine. And somebody asked uh, to repeat those steps. 
Oh, to repeat the steps? Sure. Okay, bottom left of the toolbar. So find your toolbar at the bottom of your screen. You may need to hover over it because it, sometimes it disappears. And the far left, there's a microphone icon. And then there's a little carrot to the right of that. And you're going to click that. And it's going to open up a menu. And you'll click on test speaker and microphone. And then you're going to walk through this process here. It's going to ask you if you hear a ringtone. I'll say yes. Ask me to speak and pause and did I hear myself? Yes, I did. So I'll click yes on that and then um, it says that everything's set up and looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish. Okay, so hopefully that answered that question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. <laughs> Feel free to test your mics right now. If everybody wants to take a minute and say hi, we're not going to go individually, but just... Hello, can you hear me? I can. Hello. Just Millie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is so Hello. fun. It's really kind of fun. My classroom. This is so much fun. Hello. Hi. Hello. Fabulous question. Hi. 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 All right. Ooh, rocking chairs. Awesome. Okay. Anybody else want to take a test? Hello? Mark Barrington says, voices in my head. I know, right? <laughs> I have. Okay, that was fun. Hello? <laughs> I don't think I've ever had so many mics on at one time. That was fabulous. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask Jen to mute everybody again. Okay, and then, so just, if everyone, after I mute everyone, then I'm going to unmute Alyssa. So here we go. Are we up and running again? Yep, you're running. Okay, perfect. Okay. Such power, I can mute everyone. Right? Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with our video cameras. And we're going to go back down to the toolbar here at the bottom. And rather than our audio, we're going to come over here to um, the video icon. And if you notice, as I'm hovering over some of these, it's giving you the keyboard shortcuts. So this one is Alt-V if you want to get to your video without using your mouse and the audio was all A. Hey, that's pretty intuitive, right? A for audio, B for video. I'm just noticing that. <laughs> you learn Alyssa? something new every day. Yeah. Alyssa, hey, can Jackie. I ask a question? Hi. Of course. Can you show us the settings as a moderator, how to mute everybody and how to mute all the, the you know, as a moderator would? Do? Yeah, we'll get there. We're just not there yet. We're still learning to be Perfect. participants. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're headed that direction, I promise. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to hover over the carrot here and click it. It's going to give me some options. It tells me that I'm using my Logitech webcam, which is true, which I just barely got working last night. So I was um, glad it wasn't my camera. It was a port on my computer. So um, I've got that working. Uh, you can choose a virtual background here if you would like. And there's another place to choose it that I'll, that I'll show you where that's at. And then we're going to look at video settings real quick. I am not going to take the time to go through all of these, um, but this is where you can find some video information about your camera and some different recording and different things. I'm not sure why the keyboard shortcuts are hidden in here, but you can access those here uh, just by clicking around on the different menu items. There's a recording one. Um, here's the other place to access the virtual background. And I've not been able to make this one work on my computer. Um, I think my background was too colorful. Let me just give it a try and um, let's see. I probably should turn my video on first so you can see it. And then Okay, so it is kind of doing the virtual background in the background, but it needs um, it need it really needs like a green screen type effect, and I don't have anything solid enough to put behind myself. So this one um, seems like we should maybe experiment with it just a little bit more. And like I said, um, I'm still learning. Jen said that at the beginning too. This is kind of a grand experiment. So um, I'm just going to go back to choosing none because I didn't find that this worked particularly well for me. And then um, I just wanted to show you one thing while we're in these particular settings. This doesn't have anything to do with your video, but it does have to do with screen sharing. 
This is the um, account feature that we were missing earlier was to show Zoom windows during screen share. So if you do want to demonstrate something in Zoom to students to show them how to do something, you're going to want to come into your account and make sure that you have this checked and that you have access to that. Otherwise, your students are not going to be able to see your demonstration of the Zoom window like you're able to see with what I'm doing right now. Okay, like I said, we're not going to go through all of these. Um, you can come back and investigate on your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click out of here. What I'd like you all to do now is to go ahead and um, turn your cameras on and off and um, just get practice, um, you know, using it and getting comfortable with it. And if you want to um, have your camera on for a minute, this is the time to do it. And I'm actually not sure why. Are you guys all seeing my camera? Because I can't see my camera. Yes. You are. Okay, perfect. Hi. Hello. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> All right. Feel free to put your mic back on for a minute if you want to ha take the take your camera and um be able to, oh, to speak. Oh, hi, I saw Felicia hi, and now Felicia. you can see now. Okay. Hi. 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 G Quinley. Hello. Hi. Hi. G Quinley. How do we turn this off again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get to showing some places I'll, to turn I'll mute. Off. Here, I'll mute everyone and then, um, and then Alyssa, I'll unmute you. Okay, that's fine. All right, so playing with the cameras for now. I'll show you another place here in just one sec where you can also control your audio and your video. And what I'm gonna do now is, um, I am going to stop my video just because um, I think it will make things run more smoothly. And we are going to go um, back to this panel on um, the bottom of our Zoom window and we're gonna look at our Zoom menu. And Jen, I noticed um, a chat come up for someone who didn't have audio. If um, someone could check on that, that'd be great. Yes. Okay. Either um, you so or Andy Ven, or <laughs> Ven, I'm going to email you privately. And I just wanted to say really quickly in the chat, there's a couple of questions about folks. So everyone, we turned off your video because we're recording this and it's really a best practice to not have video while you're recording. So just, I just wanted to address that because there were a couple different questions in the chat. Thank you. All right, so um, I want to talk about um, the participants panel and some tools we have like chat. So um, yours isn't going to say manage participants. Yours is going to just say participants. Mine says manage participants because I'm the host. So um, the tools are the same, just the way they're labeled is um, changes just a little bit depending on whether you're being a participant or a co-host or a host. So if everyone um, could just go down to the menu at the bottom and click on the participants icon like I'm gonna do now. And what that does is it pops up a side panel and what you should be seeing now is um, Jennifer's beautiful picture is what I'm seeing. I'm not sure who else, um, you know, what other screen that anyone else might have, but that's um, the last thing that I have on mine. And then um, on the far right, you should have a panel that lists out the names of everybody who is here. And as I'm scrolling through the list, uh, you can see this one that's labeled cart is um, the, the transcriptionist and um, that's got the CC um, role assigned to it so you can see who is providing the captions. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up to the top and um, here um, we have uh, a little cloud with a record button in it that's showing the recording. You can see my mic bouncing up and down because I'm the one that's speaking right now. And then you can see that there's a, a slash through my computer or my um, camera icon because my camera is currently off. So this is another place you can come to manage your audio and your video. And you can see as I hover over different people's names, because I'm the host, I get different options. I can automatically unmute or mute people from here. 
I also have these options at the bottom where we can mute all or unmute all. And these are the, these are the buttons that Jen's been using to mute and unmute everyone just to make sure that we're not getting a lot of background noise. So um, as a presenter, you can manage your participants and their audio here, or you can come up and do it individually by person. And as you're hovering over um, people's names, you'll see that I'm getting a button that says more. If I click on more as the host or co-host, you're gonna get some other features pop up like um, chatting, um, asking to start someone's video. I can make somebody a host or a co-host. I can allow people to record. I can assign the closed captioning, which I've already done. I can rename. Actually, you should be able to rename yourself by hovering over your own name. You should get um, some buttons that pop up that I think that allows you to mute and unmute and rename yourself. I can put people on hold and um, as the host, we can also um, remove people um, from the session if we need to. So these are just some additional features that are in here. And Jen, I think I just remembered how to file share. I'm not sure. So we'll get back to that. Okay. Do you want um, me I, to share the files? No, not, not yet. We'll, we'll get okay. there. Um, Sorry, that was a random comment that just came into my head of um, when I was looking at the, the chat options there. Okay, so um, I also just enabled my group chat and I was able to do that using one of um, the buttons that was in the um, pop-up menu that I just had up. When I was um, hovering over more, it gave me some additional options. You can also get to the chat down here uh, along the bottom. And you can see now that we have enabled the participants panel, and I just popped up the chat, that this menu that we were looking at has shrunk up. It's kind of um, condensed itself. And now we have these three little dots here labeled more. And all you need to do is click on those and it will pop up those remaining uh, icons that were there earlier that we can't see now because we have some other um, windows up. All right, so to open and close chat, uh, the, the keyboard um, shortcuts Alt-H, and um, you would just come here and click on chat. That took mine away because I already had mine enabled. And then I'm just gonna come down here and click on it again to uh, put it back up. So if everybody would um, put up the participants panel, because we're gonna use that here in just a second. And if you'll also put up the group chat so you can find that, we're gonna use that here in just a second. Let me give you um, just a sec to practice that. Hopefully some of you were doing that while I was talking. If you're having trouble finding it, let me know and I'll show you where to, how to do that again. Just go ahead and put um, a message into the chat for us. And please, if you have any questions while we're on the topic of chatting, um, if you have any questions as we're going through here, um, please put those in the chat as we go. And even if we can't answer it right now, we'll try to come back to it and get to it at the end. Okay, so um, if you just real quick want to type something in chat to give it a practice, I see a lot of you are doing that. So uh, we've got about a billion messages going right now. So that's awesome. Thank you for testing. And this works the same as um, it does for participants as, as it does for presenters. And while we're here and while you're testing that, I'm going to just go back to um, my slides for a second and I'm going to grab those URLs that I promised you. So let me just come in here and grab these. And Alyssa, while you're doing yeah. that, um, I'm just going to say to everyone on the chat, so Monique, Andy, and I are all cutting and pasting questions from the chat into a Google Doc, and we'll Perfect. show those to Alyssa um, when, it's, when it's appropriate. <laughs> so keep posting your questions to the chat. People are asking great questions, and I see a lot of people are wondering how I got my picture in there, and we will be sure to cover that. Okay, yeah, I haven't done that for a long time. You might actually have to remind me how to do that. I'm gonna remind myself. <laughs> Why don't you go look that up, Jen? I'm, pre <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't remember how to do that. Um, but I, I think that that is probably in, um, might be in the account, but I think you can do it without having an account. So we all need to check that. So that can be your assignment. 
Okay, I'm just going to keep typing a few things into the chat here. So the hotkeys are going in and I'm going to grab um, the link to the resources document here and then I'll give you um, the URL for where we're going to log in because we are going to do that in just a minute. Okay, so there's the course resources document I talked about earlier. And, um, and moderators or hosts, co-hosts, you might want to grab some of those links that I'm putting in and uh, maybe once we're done using the chat, go back through and kind of post them all close together because they're kind of spread out right now. And normally I would have done a better job of um, remembering to assign um, or share this uh, document with my with my co-hosts beforehand so they had access to everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're not seeing me because my, um, I just see a, a note in there from Anne-Marie that um, she sees a picture of Jen, um, but not me. I think you're seeing a picture of Jen because um, that's what my screen is parked on. And right now I'm sharing my screen with you. So you're gonna see whatever I see. And right now you're watching me cut and paste um, links into the chat for everyone. I'm trying okay, to so, figure out how to remove myself from being displayed yeah, so prominently. You know <laughs> I think some things changed in Zoom recently because personally I have actually been struggling a little bit with some of um, the views. Like I've noticed when I've been in meetings that they have this new side-by-side -side view and I've not been able to unpin the speaker and sometimes for me having watching the speaker speak distracts me from what they're presenting and I like to get that out. So I've actually been struggling with um, some of the, the view options in here recently. So if I could just do one quick workaround for folks, um, one, one best practice when you are delivering content is to not have your picture displayed. So how Alyssa is doing it right now where you're looking at her slide deck, um, I think sometimes people feel like they have to be videoing while doing zoom but for a lot of um for a lot of digital marketers when they are using slide when they're when they're delivering content they actually don't have their video on for exactly the reason Alyssa described it's distracting yeah. and there is um on the screen share we're going to talk more about screen share in a minute there is an option on the screen share um, menu to pause your sharing and that way you can go back and forth between Zoom and other windows without people seeing what you're doing. I've made the intentional choice right now not to use the pause uh, just so that you can see everywhere I'm going and what I'm doing. I, I don't want you to miss a step, I guess is what I'm saying. So I'm just gonna share everything I'm doing and let you watch me go between windows and do different things until we get to talking about the actual screen sharing piece. And then at that point, I'll show you what it looks like um, when I do use the pause. And the pause is actually a new feature I learned about just last week. I guess I never paid attention to it or never realized maybe that it was there. I don't know, but um, I did just learn about that one. I also just learned about the um, virtual backgrounds as well. So we are going to do a little chat activity. I know you all just practiced, so now we're actually um, going to do something with that. So I'm gonna just take this question. I am gonna put this in the chat real quick, and then um, I'll put it up on the screen nice and big too. But if you would all just um, take one second to type into the chat, what is the one thing that you most want to learn about Zoom today. I'm not promising we're gonna get to everything. I'm just kind of curious as to um, what is like, what's your priority? What did you wanna learn about most? And so Jen, since I can't see the chat right now, would you mind um, just sharing a few of the things that are coming in? We don't need to go through all of them because um, we actually have about 300 people here, so. Yeah, like, so I'm, I'm seeing them, they're coming in really fast. So like yeah. <laughs> running a live chat, breakout rooms. Okay. Um, ah, they're, <laughs> I'm like, I know, I'm a fast right. reader. <laughs> breakout rooms, I'm seeing a lot. Whiteboard, okay. I'm seeing. Okay. Um, can we give PowerPoint multiple choice quizzes? 
um, how to set up a regular meeting time, um, it, breakout rooms, whiteboard, how to hold Thank a meeting, you. join a meeting, office hours. There are a lot of lots of good variety. Okay. Yeah. All host right. a well, dance party. Host and do that one. Host <laughs> a dance party. All right. Well, we would need to use our cameras for that, and we'd need to have some really awesome music. Okay. Well, thanks for participating uh, in the chat. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but as I'm demoing things, I'm also stopping to in, trying to stop um, every five to 10 minutes and try to engage you in what we're doing. So that's kind of a good practice too, is not just to like pretend like you're up at the front of the room and just talking and talking and talking. I know you know <laughs> what I mean. Um, I'm sure we're all guilty of it. I know I have been guilty of it in the past. So um, just do try to stop and engage your audience and build in places for participation. And for those of you that put breakouts um, rooms in the chat a minute ago, we are going to learn about that. We're going to talk about um, using some of the participant tools next. And then um, we'll look at creating a meeting and an invite, getting it on the calendar, screen sharing. And then hopefully we're gonna get to doing a poll toward the very end. And then I'm gonna um, ask Jen to share a file so that you can see what the file transfer piece looks like. So those are some of the things that we have in store for today. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of my slides again. And I'm going to come back to the Zoom window so that you can see what I'm um, going to do in Zoom. I do see a quick account question that I'd like to answer um, from Laura. Uh, can students have Zoom Classic and not worry about the 40 minute time limit except? I'm not sure about student Zoom accounts. Um, but students don't need accounts if they're just clicking a link to log into your room. So unless you are asking them to use Zoom for something else outside of meeting with you, um, they wouldn't need a Zoom room of their own. But I don't know the answer to the 40 minute part of that question. So, all right, um, let's look at um, the participant panel some more. We did just do a little experiment with chat. And that was fun. Um, let's look at the participant tools and you're going to see those up here. Yours look just a little bit different than mine. You'll have a blue hand here. If you'll all just practice clicking on the blue hand to let me know that you've found that. I see Will has found it. Okay, looks like a lot of people are finding that. As the host, I don't have access to raising my hand because I'm supposed to be the one calling on people, so I don't get a little hand button, but participants have that. So this is um, a general practice for hosting meetings or class sessions, and it doesn't really matter if you're doing this with students or with, with colleagues. Um, you probably don't need to use the raise hand feature if you don't have very many people in the meeting. Like if it was just me and Jen, we're not gonna take turns raising our hand to be called on to ask a question or speak to each other. We're just gonna go back and forth and have that conversation like we normally would. And Jen and I have had a lot of conversations in Zoom and other web conferencing um, tools. Um, but in a large group like what we're doing here today, um, raising your hand is one way for a participant to indicate to the host or co-host that they would like to be called on to either take the mic and ask a question or maybe um, you know, say that they have something in the chat. But that puts you in the queue and you'll see that Emily's name is up at the top right now because Emily was the first one to get that hand icon clicked and then Natalie's in the second position and Linda's in the third position. And um, I'm sure if I scroll through the participants list, which I'm only seeing just a little portion of right now, um, I see lots of hands up and I see lots of hands not up and that's fine. You can um, unraise your hand by clicking the hand icon again and that will go away. And then as the host or co-host, I have this cool feature right here called clear all, which you won't see in your panel. I'm just going to go ahead and clear all and that takes away everybody who had their hand up or who had um, given those options a try. And I see that some other people are still experimenting with that right now. Okay, so that's the hand 
raise, raise hand option. We are, I'm gonna clear this out. And if you'll um, stop raising your hands for a second, we're gonna go to the yes, no options. And I'm gonna ask a question. My question is how many of you have Zoom accounts? So if you have a Zoom account, please click yes. If you don't have a Zoom account, just click no for me. Okay, and you can see that the numbers are changing here, even without scrolling through. Yeah. I can see that 120 some people do have their Zoom accounts, and I, I can see that 45 people are indicating that they don't. I can't find the. So, um, the the options for answering yes and no are in the participants tools, and you will need to have the participants panel opened up before you can see those. And if you go down here to the bottom of your screen, you can click on more and find, yours will just say participants, mine says manage participants. But go ahead and click that and it will pop, pop up that participants window for you. And then you'll be able to access um, the different tools. Okay, so it looks like everybody's um, had an opportunity to answer yes, no to that. I'm gonna go ahead and clear those responses. And we're going to do one more. And that's this one here, um, the three little dots inside the gray circle with the word more underneath it. If you hover over that, you can give um, thumbs down. I hope I don't get any of those today, but if I do, that's all right. Uh, you can do thumbs up, you can do claps, and you can do virtual coffee. So if you wanna give any of these a test, please feel free to do so. And this little one over here that looks like a clock is the indicator that you can pop up by your name that you have temporarily stepped away from your computer or stepped away from the meeting. I'm just gonna click that one real quick and you can see that it um, popped that little icon up next to my name. And as I change, um, it changes the, the icon that you're seeing there. And you can see me at the very, very top. Okay, so I think that we are good on participant tools. Let me go ahead and clear this out. I'm gonna ask you um, one more question real quick. We'll have you use a yes or no. Are you feeling like you're understanding what we're doing so far? If um, yes, go ahead and give me the green check mark. If no, um, tell me the no button. And if you are um, someone who's answering no because you are confused, either take the mic real quick or type into the chat for us um, what parts might be a little confusing for you to see if we need to um, review anything. Okay, hey, doesn't sound like anybody's gonna raise their hand or, or take the mic, um, but please, if you do have a question or you're confused about anything, um, put that into the chat. Um, I do see a quick question from Anne. Is there a whiteboard in Zoom? Yes, there is, and we will get to that here in just a little bit. Oh, Alyssa, um, yeah. Thomas Oliver actually has a really great question about okay. the going slower, going faster. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you show everybody those real quick? Because um, I think that also, if you're doing a, a kind of content, that would be, yeah. Well, there, okay. there really isn't much to them. It's just an indicator <laughs> for participants to give to um, the speaker whether they should slow down or go faster on. I mean, it is relevant. Like if somebody was feeling confused, they could ask you to slow down. Could we ask everybody to do it real quick? I'm, I've sure. We've never used this before, but for my Guided Pathways webinar series, I always wanted to try. Oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> this I wish is so they, cool. <laughs> I wish they had one that was the right speed, just so people could say, yeah, this is the tempo's good and everything's um, yeah. all right. This is, this is super interesting, <laughs> though, because I've personally never been in a Zoom conversation with this many people on it. Um, so I feel like this is a really rare opportunity to, like, see what happens when a bunch of people type into this in the chat at once. I, this is exciting. Yeah, this is the second largest one. Um, I've been in Panopto last week. Their room was, it was a webinar room versus a meeting room and it could hold 500 and we had 389. Um, my room only holds 300. So I suspect there may have been some people that didn't get in and that will have to distribute the recording out. So, 
Um, Linda says use thumbs up to indicate that it's just the right speed. Yeah, that's a good idea. Pretty much um, you can use the tools for whatever you choose to use them as for as long as you explain to participants how they should use them and why you're using them, which I hope I've been doing as we've been going along. So, and this is a little different for me because sometimes, um, because I don't have slides like guiding the conversation, it's easy to kind of get distracted. Um, so hopefully we are staying on the right track. I just have a little list here and I'm going to make sure that um, I'm, I've gone over the things I wanted to go to. I'm crossing off the stuff that we've gotten to. Okay. So um, I think, I think we should dig into some account features now. Um, because before you can be able to use a lot of the features in Zoom, you actually have to go and enable them in your account. So if, um, if everyone's okay with where we're at right now, I think um, I'm just going to go ahead and screen share my Zoom account if that's all right. And I'm just going to clear all the hands and everything um, for now. And I am going to find my browser. Okay, so I'm using Chrome today. Um, we're not actually um, going to do slides right now. I'm going to take you to the Zoom sign in. And um, that was the link I put in the chat earlier that was the zoom.us. Okay, and I'm not sure. I am already signed in, it looks like maybe. Let's see. No, I'm gonna sign in. Let me sign in real quick. Sorry, you can hear me tipper tapping. And um, you'll all just need to know that I'm not a particularly good typist. And the more people that are watching, the worse it gets. So with 298 of you watching me, because I think the last count I saw was 299. Um, yeah, my typing's probably bound to be pretty bad today. So let's get signed in. Okay, so this is my Zoom account, and you can tell that I'm signed in because my picture's here. And let me just see, um, that's also where you can sign out at. Hey, Alyssa, okay. just really quickly, yeah. I think people are saying that they're not seeing the hand on your screen. The hand? Yeah, like when your little mouse is moving. Okay, let me fix that real quick. Um, all right, um, I have I haven't talked about this piece yet because um, we didn't we haven't got to screen sharing yet. So far, I've been screen sharing, but I haven't told you how to screen share. So I'm in screen share mode right now, and when you're screen sharing, you get this extra little panel um, of tools, and one of those is the annotate tool. And I'm going to ask you all to refrain from using any sort of annotation. Um, but I am going to go in here, I'm going to click the spotlight tool, and I'm going to choose this one right here. And hopefully you're seeing a red dot now where my mouse is. Can you see that? Yes. Sorry, yes. I was okay. muted. <laughs> That's, oh, no worries. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, just drag this off the screen again, just because it's in the way. We'll, we'll get back to annotation in a little bit but for right now I just wanted to turn that on since um, someone asked about um, not being able to see my mouse. Okay so this is a that's a feature that you can use if you want to be able to point and share. Um, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good. I have a tendency to wiggle my mouse a lot so it might be distracting for some people. So I'm actually gonna take my hand off my mouse unless I'm um, planning to move it. So this is um, just the main page of my Zoom account where we logged in. I'm on the meetings option right now. I'm gonna click on profile real quick. And um, Jen, if you didn't find it, this is where you add your picture. Yes. Yeah, but and I'm I, not sure. I think participants that just are logging in, even if you don't account, have an account, I think you might still be able to add a picture, but I'm not sure. 
I'm going to Google it. Okay, you go ahead and do that. If you find anything, let me know. All right, so um, this is my profile. This is my personal meeting room, the 865-365-9489. And this is my personal meeting room link. Um, that's my meeting ID and my room link. And then um, you also can personalize your link. This one's kind of easier to remember, zoom.us slash my slash a cells. And th these are the links that you would share with students. I will show you how to generate a meeting invite here in just a minute. Um, but this information is housed in your account. So if you ever don't know where it is or can't remember what your room number is or what the URL is, you can come here to look that up. All right, I'm just gonna scroll through these. We're not gonna talk a lot about this. Uh, just a couple things I want to point out. Um, there's my email address, that's my sign-in email. Um, I am a licensed user. My meeting room capacity is 300. I don't know if yours will be 300. I'm not sure what the licenses they're giving out um, right now. I'm not sure what the capacity on those are, but if you want to know how many people you can have in your room, here's where you're going to go to find that information. And then um, I've got mine set to English and then I'm in Pacific time as most of you probably are, but some of you may not be. Some of you might have been teaching from other states and so you might possibly want to uh, change your time zone. Okay, um, let's see. I don't think we need to worry about anything else in here. So let's scroll back up. Okay, so that was the profile option here. Um, we've got meetings and webinars. I don't have access to webinars, I don't think. It tells us what webinars are. And this is what I was talking about, um, that Panopto had 500 people. They used the webinar, the Zoom webinar. We're actually not using Zoom webinar, we're using Zoom meetings. So we're not gonna spend any time talking about webinar, the webinar product, but if you wanna know about it, you can come in here and read it. Okay, so back to the meetings option. If I want to schedule a new meeting, I'm gonna do it here. I am gonna open that up just a second, in just one second here. And then right down here, you can see that I have two recurring meetings that are already here. And um, these are rooms that just stay open. I don't have an end date put on them. And the room that we're actually in today is the room I had set up for um, my normal Ignis webinar series that I run each spring. And um, we'd already started distributing the URL and lots of people were familiar with using it. So I just decided to go ahead and use this particular recurring room for all of the training that we're doing right now. And um, because it is a reoccurring, recurring room, it's open 24 seven. So if you um, happen to have seen the email invitation from me, uh, there was a little note in my, uh, the body of um, the message that said, if you wanted to try it, you could. And when you clicked that link, it would just take you into the meeting room. And it's only able to do that because I've left it open for, you know, without an end date. So let's go ahead and schedule a meeting and I'll show you how to set a reoccurring meeting and um, how to, to set one with a specific date. So I'm just gonna click here on schedule a new meeting. And um, it's gonna walk me through the options for what I want to have this meeting be. Okay, so um, let's just call this um, we'll just call this learn to zoom because that's what we're doing today. Okay. If I want it, that's my title for my meeting. So that's the topic. The description is optional. You can choose to put that in, um, you know, if you want to, I don't usually put one in on mine. Okay. Then you're going to choose a date. It defaults to the current date and time. So if I want to choose something different, I could go, let's say I want to schedule something for Monday. Okay, so now it's changed it to the 30th. And I want to change the time. Let's see, let's do 2 p.m. on Monday. Um, most meetings, you know, we usually schedule them for an hour. 
uh, but you can schedule them um, for longer if you want to. I, I don't know about having a seven hour meeting, but I suppose if you were running a full day event, you could schedule something um, to run that long. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one at an hour. It is on Pacific time. And when I was talking about the recurring meeting, if I do want to leave this room open and have it be open, I'm gonna click recurring and then it's gonna ask me about um, if I want it to be daily, um, do I want it to have an end date, do I want it to um, um, just repeat. So um, you can choose whichever options work for you. Okay. Um, so you can choose however many days you want it to repeat. And then here, I think, um, yeah, this is where I chose no fixed time. So if I was creating a meeting room that I wanted to leave open, like the Ignis room that I used as an example, I would click no fixed time. If it was something I just wanted to use for a month or for a week, I would choose one of these other options. And maybe if it was something I was gonna do on a daily basis, um, I would choose this feature here. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it. Can you say um, Wednesday, Friday? Um, you know what? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see daily and repeat every. If you go to weekly. If it, is it on weekly? I've actually never set one that way. So let's see. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah, job. Thank you. thank you. Look at that. Ah, I love it when I learn something new. Okay. I've never set one that way. So yes, yes, you can. Hopefully that answers your question. And thank for the, thanks for the assist for whoever that was from the audience, much appreciated. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this um, as um, a non-recurring meeting just so we don't have all that gunk up there. Okay, registration. You can require registration. Um, I don't usually put registration on mine because it adds a layer of complication to joining the meeting that you might not want to have. But there are times when having somebody register could be beneficial. It makes them put in their email address um, and kind of signs them up. And then that would give you a way to track who had signed up. So there are times when using registration um, could be useful, but on a daily basis, I don't use this feature. Okay, um, the next one is your meeting ID. I would suggest just using your personal meeting ID because then it's just one URL you have to keep track of. I find that to be easier. But um, I use my personal room for all of my regular normal day-to-day -day meetings with colleagues. So if I was gonna have a meeting with Jen, we would meet in my personal room or her personal room. Um, when my team meets, um, Monique uses her personal room for that. But if I left my personal room open as um, an option for people to pop in whenever they wanted, um, people could be testing and come into my room if I had it set that way. Um, like for Ignis, if I had used my personal room for Ignis and then given everybody the link, they could have been popping in at all times um, during my personal meetings and I wouldn't want that. So that would be a case where I would want to generate um, a meeting link automatically and it will actually open a separate room that's separate from my, my personal ID. So um, I think probably for most of you, you're probably going to want to use your personal meeting room for most of what you're doing. But there are, of course, exceptions to that. And I would encourage you to explore those and be flexible. Try it one way that you think it's going to work. And if it um, doesn't work, then um, you know, you can change it up and, and do it differently the next time. So don't be afraid to experiment. Um, this is all just learning stuff for everybody. I'm actually not a Zoom expert. I mean, I don't consider myself to be. I know a lot about it because I use it, but you will ask me questions today. I guarantee it um, that I don't readily know the answers to, although I probably can help you find where that answer is. Um, I'm probably not going to know the answer to certain things right off the top of my head. Okay, Lisa, the next one. Yeah, Jackie? This is Jackie. Yep. Um, is there a place to take attendance or would that registration be the place that you would use to take attendance? 
Uh, I think maybe registration would be good for that, although I don't know that registration actually tracks who does and doesn't attend. It just will tell you who is signed up, but I don't know that it will actually tell you who's there. There are some analytics features in our account. Um, and when we pop out of the screen, if you remind me, I'll show you where the button is. I have Sounds not explored good. that at all, um, but there may be a way um, to track it in there. I'm, I'm not sure. So see, I okay. told you there was going to be a question that I didn't know the answer to, and we've already had two like in the last 10 minutes. Well, so <laughs> that, that's my job to talk. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, but um, I, would ex I would encourage you to explore the analytics and see um, what's in here. Okay, um, requiring a meeting password. Again, um, like the registration piece, this is not one that I um, use because it adds another layer to the logging in process. So um, I do see that there are times where maybe having a meeting password could be beneficial. So you can require that. I believe you can customize it. Yep. Okay, so you can um, make your own password. So if I was gonna have a password for my Ignis room, I would have probably chosen Ignis 2020. If I was gonna have had a password today, I probably would have just had the password be Zoom. But I like to keep things as flexible and easy for my participants as possible. So um, I don't tend to use the require meeting password. And honestly, if I'm just like having a quick meeting with Jen, I'm definitely not gonna make her have to have a password into my room. That's just like, it's kind of like a time saving. Okay, um, earlier I um, mentioned like way early, right when we were starting, that I had my room set for everybody to come in with their video off and with their um, audio off. So I do have those settings checked to off in here. Uh, this is a good practice just because you don't know the exact moment when your video camera is gonna come on. So, um, you know, just so everybody's prepared and that video is optional, I just make sure to leave it off for everybody. And then it's your choice as a participant in my room, whether or not you're going to use your camera and when you're going to use it. Um, another good practice for setting up your meeting rooms is to allow for telephone and computer audio. So you can see here, I have mine marked as both. And what that does is in your meeting invite, that will generate um, a telephone call-in number that you can share out with um, participants. I have had to call into meetings before because my headset randomly wasn't working. So um, if you remember back to one of the initial slides, I, chose, I showed you where you could choose a tab to join with computer audio or by phone. Um, if you choose by phone, it allows you to um, either be called or you can call in. I typically choose the to call option. And then I just use my, my cell phone and I call in. I do have a little headset, that get, a wireless headset, like a Bluetooth headset that goes with my phone. And I can use that in lieu of my regular um, headset and mic with my computer. So um, I, I like having that as a backup option. And then you can also use, you can just, you don't have to have a headset. You can just use the audio from um, your phone because it does have a speaker and mic on it. You just would want to make sure that you used um, the mute button on your phone to make sure um, that people weren't getting background noise from you. But as a good practice, do give your participants both the option for computer and telephone because you don't know who's gonna need to call from where. I've actually even called in um, from my phone um, to listen to a meeting and participate in a meeting from the car because I happen to have been driving during the time the meeting was scheduled. So um, it's good to be flexible and have options. All right, some other options we have in here are um, to enable join before host. If you don't want anybody to come into your room before you are in there and have started the meeting, you're gonna uncheck that box. I personally like to have the option for people to come in early, even if I'm in there trying to set up um, 
I, I still like people to come in early so they can feel comfortable and test their, their microphones and whatnot. So I tend to use this one on um, all of my meetings. Um, here's where I have the participant audio muted. Remember I said the audio and video in my room were muted when you entered. Uh, what this does, um, besides cutting on background noise, when somebody enters, like if they were like 10 minutes late and they come in with their, their mic live, they might have background noise that could interrupt the regular flow of the meeting that's in progress. So I really, really like this feature. If you want to hold um, people in a waiting room area before they can come in, um, you would go ahead and check the enable waiting room. And that just kind of puts the participants in a holding pen and um, allows you to say when they can come into the room. Um, I haven't used that one, the features in here. Um, I haven't used this as a host, but I have been held in a waiting room as a participant. And um, pretty much it just gives you a little message that just says, you know, that the meeting hasn't started yet. And then um, as soon as the host presses the button to let everybody in, everybody's just funneled into the room at once. Okay, um, authenticated users. I don't use this one. Um, I, my guess is that you have to be logged into Zoom to be able to use for to join specific things. Um, so I don't check that one because not everybody has a Zoom account. And we might need to do a little further research on that one because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure authenticated users means that they have to log in in some way. And then I don't like to choose um, record the meeting automatically. If you're somebody who's going to forget to start your recording, that might be a good one for you. But I don't like to start my recording until I'm ready. So I don't choose to have that one on. And then if I wanted to have an alternative host for my room, if it's somebody from the same um, account, you can assign co-hosts, alternative hosts here. Like I could put Jen or Andy or Monique in here because they all have SBCTC Zoom accounts. Um, I did try to add somebody, because um, Kelly Meeson from Clover Park, he co-hosts my Ignis webinars with me. I tried to add him here once, but because he wasn't part of the SBCTC account, I wasn't able to add him here. So I've only had limited success um, with that one. All right, so I think we talked through all of these. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and save this, and then it's going to add it as a meeting to um, our calendar area. Okay, so this, it's popped us into meetings. We are still in the Learn to Zoom. It's asking us what we want to do. Do we want to start this meeting? Well, no, I don't want to start that right now, because if I clicked that right now, it's probably going to kick us all out of here, because you can only have... Uh, one instance of um, Zoom, you can't, running at a time, you can't be in two different rooms at the, at the same time um, very successfully. Uh, I need to take a drink, so give me just one sec here, sorry. All right. Yeah, okay, so what, what are you drinking? I'm drinking chai this morning, thank you for asking. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, chai with um, cream, vanilla caramel chai. I was thinking the same thing when you said I have to take a drink. I have to. Well, I we might we might all need a drink at the end of <laughs> at the end of all this. I also have water. My throat's getting a little dry from talking so much. Okay, I have been talking for quite a bit um, because I wanted to get through all those meeting features. I would like to um, pause just for one second before I show you this piece of it. I'm going to check in with Jen and ask and Monique and Andy, everyone who's watching the chat, if there's anything interesting um, that is related to this that we should address now. I think we have a number that we probably want to address before you go on because Andy and I were just privately chatting realizing like, oh my gosh, we probably should have paused you at different points to kind of get caught up on some of That's these. That's okay. Okay. Um, why don't we hit me with a few and then um, some of them we may need to, just for time's sake, we may need to move on. But why don't you give me a couple of them? Yeah. Hey, Andy, are, can you highlight a couple here that you think seem to be sticking out? Or let me get back in here. 
Um, let's see. Someone, I'm just going to rattle off what I see. Can we have a slide up in the waiting room that they could see once they enter it? This I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Yeah, and I don't either, actually. I haven't done that one, so that's one to look into. Um, here's a recent one. Two questions. As the host, how do I toggle what gets shown on the main screen and what is in the sidebar screen? For example, I'm going to want my screen share to be the smaller view and my presentation to be the main view. This is related to one, how do I control what gets shown on a recording? I tested making a recording yesterday. I was interviewing another individual, but the recording only captured me, not the camera of the person I was interviewing. Okay, so we're gonna hold that one because it's not related to the account features that we're talking about. And we are gonna come back to screen sharing in a little bit. Okay, great. Um, and just really quickly, North eLearning just put into the chat that you can customize the view in the waiting room. Oh, awesome, thanks. So, thanks, North. And there, there was a question about the settings for the, the meeting. If you've already scheduled a meeting, can you go back and adjust? Yes, settings? you can edit. Okay. Yep. While you're in the meeting? Um, I don't know if you can do it while you're in the meeting, um, but you would just come back here and click edit this meeting. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm not sure if it would update the meeting if the meeting room was open. Yeah. I wasn't but if sure it was that. before the meeting, it definitely would. Yeah. That was one of the questions was. Yeah. So, so one kind of thing on that is like um, an example of when you might need to do something like that would be like, let's say you wanted to use the polling feature, but forgot to enable it because we haven't even gotten to those settings yet. Um, you probably could go into the back end of your account, which is where we are right now, and add your polling question and check the box that you want to allow polling. And then I think that it probably would update it in, in the room for everybody. And Alyssa, do you know if there's a way to limit um, like participants using the chat during particular pieces? So someone's concerned about like side chat with students when they want them to focus on the lecture, the presentation. Um, you know, that is something I've encountered in Zoom webinar that sometimes the chat has been removed. Um, I think maybe that feature might be taken, you could maybe uncheck the box for chat. We can look when we get to those settings. Okay. Um, but personally for me, I use the chat with everything I do mm -hmm. because it's a great place um, for students to type in questions as you're going. And it's, it's just, it's a really great way um, to kind of gauge their learning and see where they're at by the types of things they're asking. And um, I've just never ever needed to, to remove that, but we can look when we get over to uh, those settings. Alyssa? Yes. Yeah. This, this is Joe. I don't want to- Hi, wanna, Joe. Hi, I don't want to interrupt. I just saw that as I was scrolling through the chat, um, something that might be helpful. Christy Louder um, apparently went to um, an email that you had distributed and she said the video resources that you shared in your email last week has amazing links for how to use um, if you purchase a pro account it will track participants so it okay. well, one of the things that came up and yeah. And Thank it also you. praises what you did with your <laughs> with your link. So I oh, to... thanks. Yeah, and actually, after this webinar, I'm going to resend out um, that Zoom information because I, I pre-sent some Zoom stuff um, that I shared out, and I am going to um, just touch it up. I had I think there was one link in it that wasn't working, so I'll fix that. I'll put um, the link to the recording and some other resources in there and um, I'll send that out after the webinar that'll get that will go out through I'll send it to to the SBCTC all staff which is probably where Christy saw it but it also will go out through the WAOL listserv and the um, we design listserv and the ATL listservs and then those that information will get forwarded on through the e-learning offices to the individual campuses but the information that will go into kind of that collective, here are the resources from this event um, email, all of those resources can be found in the course design doc that I gave you a link to earlier. And um, if you happen to click the link in the chat when we were talking about it, this is what it looks like. There's a section on conferencing. You just click the link for conferencing. It will take you down to the bottom. And you can see there are um, a couple of Zoom 
things in here. And then this is my learn to zoom resources document. And this is where I'm going to put all of the stuff from the webinar. I actually already have that open. So um, this is what it looks like right now. Um, for those of you that did happen to see the zoom email that I sent out previously through um, the various listservs and whatnot. Um, I just gave some links to the help center and some and some other things. There are some videos in here, options for live training. There's a there's a bunch of stuff in here and it's actually grown a lot. So this is where you're going to want to come for um, all the information from this particular webinar. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's um, very, very cool. Very cool. So, and, and this is a, um, this document is not finished. So I would encourage you to come back in here and check on it occasionally and see if anything's new, new has been added because it's a living document and I'm um, just adding stuff to it as I find um, interesting, good resources. Okay. Well, I think, yeah. here's a question that just showed up too. Um, Nancy Novak is saying, if I'm using Zoom three times a week for two and a half hours for my class all spring quarter, can I do that? I'd still want to have another other Zoom meetings during that time. Another way to say this, should I use my personal room for my spring class or is it better to set up a different dedicated room? I think for that, you would want to use um, the feature for setting up a reoccurring room or a, a meeting that happened at a specific time, like the weekly option that we looked at, I think would be better for your spring class. And then reserve your personal room for um, other meetings like maybe um you know if you need to meet with colleagues or other things so um. or this this is jerry or um set up uh, a no fixed time yeah. uh room yeah. which you know if you set up multiple if you set it up on a schedule i believe it generates uh different uh meeting ids for each room it does and so if you're going to be reusing if you're going to be having your class scheduled you know um multiple times a week, the students would have to be managing those uh, different uh, links. Whereas if you have one link, then they can just go into that one. Yeah, I think with the weekly though, if you were able to set it like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like um, someone asked earlier, I think that would all stay in the same um, meeting ID. I think where it wouldn't stay in the same meeting ID would be if you set up an individual room, like say a room for Monday, a room for Wednesday, and a room for Friday if they were separate rooms. So yeah, I, I agree with you that it's easier for students to manage a single link. So, um, and it might be easier for you as well to maybe like say if you're teaching three classes, maybe set up um, a reoccurring room, one for each class. And that way you only need to manage one link and students only need to manage one link. That way they would always be logging into the same place, at, you know, at whatever time you told them to log in. I think that that would be um, easy for you to manage that way. And then one other thing, um, just since the topic has kind of come up, uh, that the class is gonna be running a couple times a week for two and a half hours. Um, I would encourage you to touch base with your e-learning office and um, with your deans to see what decisions have been made on your campus. Um, right now, some campuses are um, requesting that faculty only run um, asynchronous sessions. Um, some campuses are letting faculty choose whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. And um, some are saying synchronous is fine, but then you need to make it optional. Um, everybody's schedules are just turned upside down right now. Um, students are gonna have kids at home when they're normally used to having um, like maybe childcare for their kids while they're at school. So just be as flexible as you possibly can and be sure to check in with your, um, with your campus to see what decisions have been made um, for your college for student access. Because we can't guarantee that every student has access to a computer at home. And yes, you can use Zoom um, through an iPhone. There is an, an Android, there are apps for that. Um, I'm not going to be able to answer any questions about that today because I don't have the apps installed and I don't use them frequently. So um, if that's something we want to explore, we'll have to do that at a different time. Um, but I would just encourage you to follow whatever campus um, 
information that you have been receiving and um, just to, to you know be as flexible as possible just because you know everything's kind of in flux right now and we did have one just one quick point um, we did have a question around what's meant by asynchronous versus synchronous okay. meetings okay so um, a synchronous meeting is what we're doing right now I told you a day date and time we all showed up together at the same time so that we're using Zoom synchronously, which is mostly how Zoom works. Um, but you could use Zoom asynchronously by going into um, Zoom on your own without students. And you could technically record in Zoom and um, then give the recording link to students later and they could watch it on their own time. There is an integration for Panopto with Zoom. Uh, Panopto is mostly used for lecture capture and recording. You can live webcast from Panopto. I don't know a lot how that works, but there is an integration um, between Zoom and Panopto. Some of the colleges have it installed right now. Some of them don't. Um, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't speak to how effective it is, but I do know some of the campuses have started using it. And what it allows you to do is to take your Zoom recordings and um, put them into Panopto for storage because we don't have our accounts um, through the K-20 contract um, that is what allows us to have our Zoom accounts. Um, they are not set up for cloud storage. So um, we're supposed to take our recordings and put them somewhere else. And I know different campuses have different setups. So check with your e-learning office. I read, a, oh, it was a note from I can't remember which college it was, but somebody was saying they were showing faculty how to take the, they record to their own computer and then they take the recording and put it to a OneDrive um, storage area. So check in with your campus to see what the practice is because everybody does it a little bit different. There's also a Zoom integration with Canvas, which we also don't have installed yet, so I can't speak um, to that, I, I read some comments from the different e-learning centers and um, they're still kind of experimenting with it. So don't really have um, much on that right now. So hope, did, Jen, did I get back to what that question was about? I'm sorry. Absolutely, you did a great okay. job. And, okay. and I, I think too, if I could just say that um, from for all of these questions, I, you know, like like Alyssa said, a lot of us have been using Zoom for a lot of different purposes, but we have never used Zoom at this scale before, yeah. or really mm -hmm. for these purposes. And I just yeah. want to say to everybody, like, we're all going to be kind of learning as we go. And obviously, when we're in the developmental space, it can get confusing, it can get overwhelming. And so just be patient with yourself and maybe don't, and, and again, Mark Barrington, who's on this call, and I are going to do a series of workshops on keeping it simple. Like, my, my biggest suggestion is if you have something that you want to try to, that you do face to face, that you're going to try to recreate perfectly using Zoom, maybe try to scale that back a little bit, um, just from looking through some of the questions. Okay. And um, I'm just noticing right now that it's 1130. And we've got quite a bit still to get through. So I think this webinar is probably going to run over. Um, I am just going to stay in and we'll just continue it with the features so we can make a great recording and have everything. Um, if you do need to log off in a half hour, which was the intended time frame for the webinar, that's fine. Um, the recording will be shared out. Um, so I do want to um, get us back into um, these meeting settings and different settings that are in here because there's a few things I still need to show you here before I can take you back to Zoom and have you play with some of the tools. All right. I'm going to scroll back up here. Okay. So after we saved that last meeting, this is the um, window that it took us to. And you can see it generated uh, a meeting ID. That's not my personal meeting ID um, because I think I, I put it on the generate automatically one. Okay, um, if I wanted to invite attendees, here's the join information for this room. If I want to copy that invitation, I can come here and here's a plain text version 
of it, you can just copy this and paste it into um, an email if you're working with colleagues, although I have a more effective way for you to do that, but the information is here. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the calendar in just a second. Um, for students, I would recommend um, coming here and taking your meeting in invitation information, and I'll thank um, Whitney uh, Boswell for um, this tip that she offered up a few days ago um, to come in and create a calendar event. Let's see if it's going to work for me. My computer is going slow. So I would just create a calendar event that's at the day, date, and time for um, whatever I um, want, um, where I want my students to be and when, and you can put um, the link here and you can save it to the calendar. And then um, that puts it here for them. I didn't save it, so you're not gonna see it. Um, do make sure though, because these are color coded, that um, you are choosing the same color for the same class. Um, if I had come in here and chosen a different class, it would change it from red to something else. And just a note on this, since I'm talking about the Canvas calendar, um, the colors that you see are different from the colors your students see. So don't tell your students to come to their calendar and look for the red calendar entries for your class because um, your view is gonna be different from theirs. And I'm just gonna choose a different class now and you can see how uh, this changed to purple. And if I just um, create this real quick, um, and I didn't, I didn't paste the information. I didn't um, grab that when we were in there, so I'm not going to put anything else in here, but I'm just going to add this to the calendar right now. And you can see that this is visibly a different color, so we know that this goes with a different classroom. If I actually wanted it to be with my March class, I would have had to have chosen the option for March. Okay, uh, let's go back to meetings. But that is that is one way that you can keep students organized and get them to show up to class time in Zoom when you need them to. The other place you could possibly put it could maybe be into an assignment or you could maybe even put it um, into an announcement. If you added it as an assignment, you could paste your meeting information into um, the area for the assignment directions. And if it was an assignment and you put a date on it, it would add it to the calendar and create a calendar event for you. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Um, you could also just post the link like in a module. You could create a page or put the Zoom link in your module and just leave it there all the time so that if they lost track of whether they had seen it on the calendar and the announcement that they always have access to it. There's a lot of different ways to do it, um, but you just want to make sure that your students have the link that you want them to use and know when they're supposed to be in your room. So um, I'll look forward after we have been using this for a while to um, hear back from teachers what their best practices are for how they invite students. Okay. Um, these are just all the things that we chose for our meeting options. You can see um, it's showing what we did and didn't save. Um, one thing I wanted to show you while we're on this screen is um, that you can add a poll here. And this room, we haven't added a poll yet. If you click this add button, and you can't do this until after you've created your room. Um, you can, um, if you're gonna do multiple polls, you could put them by number or by topic. Then you're gonna type your question here and then you'll put your answers in and um, then save it here at the bottom. And as long as you have the polling feature enabled in your room and you've put a poll question in here, uh, you'll be able to bring up a poll for your participants um, in the Zoom interface when we get back there. I actually do have one set up for us to use. I just wanted to show you real quick how to create one because we are right here and this is where you would do it. Um, I'm gonna have you do one in a little bit as a participant, so uh, we will come back to this. I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel this because we're not actually gonna use um, this room because we're in um, the Ignis webinar room right now. 
Okay, the other really important thing to talk about here are the settings. And this is where you enable the different settings for your room. So if, like I mentioned just a minute ago, if you want to be able to use pools in your room, you need to come back to this piece of your account in your settings, find the toggle button for pools, and we're going to turn that on. So let's just scroll through these real quick and see what's in here. Okay, host video, I don't want to start with mine on, so that's off. I wanted participants to start with theirs, their video off, so I'm going to leave those off. I did choose telephone and computer audio. Okay, I do allow people to join before the host. Um, I've not ever changed this one. I usually just use um, those other features we looked at a minute ago. Um, I'm not actually sure what PMI stands for. I do have this one set for using my personal meeting room when I want to start an instant meeting. So like, let's say um, maybe I was on the phone with somebody and then we decided we wanted to um, do a meeting just really quick because I needed to show them something. Um, I would just start a quick meeting and it would go default to my personal room. That's why um, I have that there. We talked about authentic users earlier. I don't have that one turned on. I don't have require passwords. So a lot of these are ones that we looked at already. And a lot of these settings do um, need further investigation because like I said, I haven't used all of them and I don't know what all of them do. Um, you can embed a password in a meeting link if you have one click join. Uh, I do have that turned on in case I ever do decide to use a password because then um, when you do one cl click join from your phone, it will do everything for that person. And I find that useful. Like if I'm driving, if people have had that setting on, I can just click it and my phone does all the work for me. Um, I don't require my phone participants to put in a password because I don't know where they're dialing from. I, I'm, they, could, they could be driving and I don't want them to get in a car wreck while they're trying to put a, my meeting password in. So I leave that one off. Um, I do have everybody muted. Um, I do have a reminder set. It pops up reminders for me. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who asked the question about taking away the chat, but this is where you would want to do that. You could remove the chat. Okay, and it's going to say that it's going to affect all of my chat features from here on. And I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to cancel that. But if you did not want to have the chat turned on, um, you could turn that off here. If you don't want people to be able to save the chat, you can turn that off. Okay. Um, one disadvantage though for taking the chat away is if somebody didn't have a headset, they wouldn't really have a way to participate. So I would be very, very careful in um, disabling this feature. Uh, I do allow private chat, which is what Jennifer was using earlier to communicate with just one single person at a time to help resolve, I think it was a technical issue or answer a question. I do have my chats set to auto save, so I don't have to remember to save them. It will save uh, a file for me, and that's um, it saves like a tr kind of like a transcript file of it, and then I can go back and look for questions if I need to. Alyssa, yeah, Jackie. If we turn off if we turn off the private chat, then that would keep the students from chatting behind the scenes. Yeah, with yeah. Each other. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yep, you could definitely do that. Um, this one um, I find particularly annoying. It's kind of like a doorbell. And so every time somebody leaves or enters the room, it play it, it ding-dongs in my ear. I don't know if participants can hear it, but I find it very disruptive as a presenter to have um, that, that chime going each time somebody comes in or out of the room. So I leave this one off. Okay, uh, file transfer, Jen and I were talking about this one earlier and I was having trouble with this one today. So I'll probably have her do the, the file transfer piece when we get there. I do have file transfer allowed and turned on. So that's here. Um, some of these might've been like default settings. I don't know, this one sends some sort of feedback to Zoom. If you don't want to provide feedback about Zoom, turn that off. 
Um, I've never used the end of meeting experience uh, feedback survey. Maybe I'll give it a try sometime, but I leave that one off as well. I do have um, the setting for co-hosts turned on so that I can um, designate people as co-hosts. Here's the one for polling. If I didn't want to have polling in my class, I would turn that off. Um, but we do want to have this turned on today because we are going to use it later. Um, you can temporarily remove attendees and put them on hold, like if you have like possibly a student who's being problematic. Uh, let's see, always show meeting control bar. Um, I think that might have been a default because I don't remember choosing that. Uh, show Zoom windows during screen share. I showed you that option earlier, but it turns it on here. And last week, um, when Andy and I were investigating all of this, we did not have this option and we didn't have um, the little button uh, back in the screen sharing options that I showed you earlier. Okay, um, as far as screen sharing is concerned, um, we can allow host and participants to share their screen or content during meetings. I do have that turned on. Who can share? You could do host only, but that really locks it down if somebody wants to, um, you know, just share something with you real quick. So I have that set to all participants and we'll practice screen sharing hopefully here shortly. And I do have it, um, set that only I can take over screen sharing if um, someone else is sharing. So if there's um, multiple people trying to share at the same time and one person has their screen shared as a participant, you're not gonna be able to override that. But me as the host, I have it set so that I can um, take back the screen share and control of the meeting if I need to. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Annotation, we are going to look at the annotation tools and the whiteboard. Again, you need to have these turned on for them to be options to be used in your room. I've never tried this one, but I think it's pretty cool uh, that you could take over remote control of somebody else's content if you needed to. I did recently turn that one on, but I haven't ever tried it. I'm not even sure where you would try that. So that's one I'm going to come back and maybe learn a little bit more about. Uh, the nonverbal feedback that we looked at in the participants chat, you can, uh, or the participants panel, you can choose to have that on or off. I have mine on. And um, I don't know why I have this one off, removing um, participants to let them rejoin. You can make a choice as to what um, you would want to do with that. I've personally never had to remove anybody from a meeting, so um, haven't really worried about that option. And then there are some advanced features um, one is the breakout room. You do need to have that turned on. There is another option to provide one-to-one -one remote support to another participant. I've never tried that one. We do have the closed captioning turned on today and that's what allowed me to assign um, captioning to um, the CART transcriptionist and that's what allowed you to be able to see the CC button on the uh, Zoom toolbar. I have it set to save the captions. It will give me a, a transcript afterward. And then I haven't really messed with the camera control. I do have virtual background turned on. And um, I have never used these last few here. So you can come in and investigate. Um, different stereo settings or sound settings. Um, a lot of these are ones I haven't tried. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have my waiting room turned on, but there might be a time um, where that seems like it would be a good idea to do. Uh, let's see. I'm not obviously gonna talk about all of these right now. Through them so that you can see all of them. And I just got a note that my internet connection is unstable, so that's unfortunate. Hopefully it doesn't pop me out of here. Um, the invitation email, I do want that generated in English, so that's set correctly. 
Um, like I said, I don't use every single feature in here, but do come in and investigate and see what seems most helpful for you. The, the biggest thing I would want to say about this is this is the area where you have to enable the features that you want to use in your room. So if you want to use closed captioning, you want to use the chat, you want to use annotation, you want to use breakout rooms, you need to turn them on here or you're not going to have the option to do that in your room. All right, I want to go back to um, scheduling meetings real quick. And um, for anyone that has Outlook, I want to show you how to schedule from um, Outlook because I, for me personally, this is how I schedule. I, I mostly schedule in Outlook. I don't do a lot of my scheduling here. And um, the agency folks that are here with us today uh, will find this. Um, useful, I think, for a daily basis. So this is just my Outlook email. I'm going to go to my calendar and I have a plugin installed and I'm not sure. I think there might be one for Google Calendar too, um, but I only use Outlook. So that's the one I'm most familiar with. I do have that um, installed and you can see when I hover over it, it um, says that it asks me what I want to do. Do I want to uh, schedule a meeting or do I want to start an instant meeting? So um, let's schedule a meeting real quick. Okay, if I schedule a meeting here, it's gonna pop open um, a window to let me choose what I want. These, you'll recognize some of these settings because they're the ones that we looked at in our meeting settings a little bit ago. And um, this already has all of my default, excuse me, all of my default settings. So I'm not gonna change anything here. I'm just gonna say continue. And um, what this will do is it will generate an email invite that you can share. So if you have everybody's email addresses, you could come up here. Like if I wanted to invite Jennifer to a meeting, I just type in Jennifer's name and put it here. And then um, when I click on the send button, this is just like scheduling a regular meeting like you normally would for like face to face. I need to show up in this particular room at this time. Um, but it gives you all of the Zoom information. You can um, park your cursor in here too, and you can, um, like if you have other information that you wanna type in that people need to know, you can put that here. And then when you save it or send it, it's gonna add it to your calendar. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you one that I've already got set up. So Jen, I'm sorry, I'm not inviting you to this meeting. <laughs> I am super bummed. I and know, hurt. I publicly humiliated. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to go back to a meeting I had scheduled in February, and um, I meet monthly with the Quality Matters coordinators. Um, there, we have one at each campus, and I schedule um, typically a meeting for us um, each month. And my best practice, and this doesn't have to be everybody's best practice, it's just something that I think works well and it's something that has worked well for me and helps keep me organized. I say um, what the meeting's for, what it is. Sometimes I leave a little note. I have a link to an agenda document here. If you had this meeting invite in front of you and you clicked this, it would take you to a Google Doc that was the full agenda. I invite people to add stuff to it before the meeting. We use it during the meeting to take notes and collaborate on things. Uh, so that helps me stay organized. And then when I'm in the meeting, I share that as the screen share and that kind of keeps us on task and keeps us running very efficiently. You could do this with students as well, um, but a lot of times with students we're using slides. So it just depends on your audience what you're going to share, but I found this particular practice to be um, useful for meetings with colleagues. And then I also give just a quick, you know, what are we going to cover? This is what we're going to do. I link any other important documents or things that I want to make sure people have uh, resources for the meeting. And then down below that is my regular Zoom invitation. So for me, this is my best practice is to put all of the information in a calendar invite, to send a calendar invite so that it's easy to add to a calendar so people know when and where and what they're supposed to do, what they're supposed to prepare. And um, this is what works for me. Um, explore 
be flexible, do what works for you. But I think yeah. you'll find that if well, you now she's actually on something that I don't know, the more information that you give um, your participants up okay, I'm front, you go. I'm try to get the more um, effective your meetings will run. And we are getting some noise from someone's um, audio. So Jen, maybe you could check that if you didn't already. Yes, just doing Thanks. it. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get out of my calendar. Um, I just wanted to show real quick how to um, do the calendar because the, the way you invite people is gonna depend on your audience. So for me, if I'm inviting colleagues um, from the agency, I'm gonna use Outlook because that's our normal scheduling tool that we normally would use. I'm just gonna add that plugin for Zoom so that it will generate that nice invitation for me. All right, um, and then for students, like I said, you can put that information for them somewhere in Canvas. Let me um, find where we are. I need to get back to my Zoom window. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to leave the Zoom account features. Is there anything really super important, Jen, that we need to address before I leave this area? Only that I think people are just wondering um, how to actually add it to the Outlook. And so I just posted a quick link. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually, um, I think there's a video in this document I showed you earlier. Um, let me see if I can find it. There should be a video in here. It might be down at the bottom. I had a list of videos somewhere in here. Um, at any rate, come back to the resources document that I showed you. There mm -hmm. is a list of videos in here, and I believe one of them was the Outlook plugin. And Monique just reposted it to the chat. Monique, okay, thank you so much. Uh, so everyone, if you look, um, Monique has posted into the chat, learn oh, to Zoom is. resources. Um, so that will have a lot of help, full tips. Okay, so let's see, do I have it in here? Yeah, scheduling a meeting with Outlook. So uh, there are the directions for that and it will direct you to um, where to go to download and what, what you need for that. Okay, anything else before we leave the, the back end of Zoom and get back to Zoom? I think, I think that's it, yeah. Okay, all right, so um, I do see a hand up. Jen, is that someone that's had their hand up for a while or do you think that was just a practice? Um, is it Emily Price's hand? Yep. Um, I didn't notice that before. Hey, Emily, okay. do you want to voice your question real quick? Um, so, Alyssa, maybe keep going. And, okay. Um, and also, for folks who are posting to the chat, um, I am trying to answer people privately. Um, so, you know, just so just so you know, and I know Monique and Andy are also monitoring the chat. Um, well, and questions that um, everyone would benefit answers to, um, just put that to everyone so that we can all benefit from seeing the answers to questions that have been asked. Absolutely. If that's all right. Okay. And I'm just, I saw a question in the chat about where do we get to like the back piece of Canvas. I'm going to just put that back into um, the chat here, the, uh, oops, there, there, it's changed to everyone. And, and while I'm on there, what you just saw me do was choose to send the information I'm going to send you to everyone. Um, I can choose from the list of participants if I wanted to privately chat with someone. Okay, so let me pop that in there. Uh, that's where you can um, sign into your Zoom account, but you do need to go to your IT office and get a Zoom account assigned to you before you go there and try to log in. And Alyssa, just one thing yeah. I, I want to just say, I'm, I've, I've heard from a couple of people that they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And I do want to say to folks like, believe me, I get it. And I think every single person I've talked to from the highest level at the state board to, you know, every, we're all feeling super overwhelmed right now. And I know it's so uncomfortable. Um, and I guess I, you know, I just wanted to kind of honor that. I can't, I don't know that I can fix the overwhelm um even for myself and so but I, I just i just wanted to honor that being in a developmental space is really uncomfortable being in a learning space is really uncomfortable and so thanks to the people who are voicing that feeling um yeah yeah i totally agree like 
as I said at the beginning of this, this whole thing is a grand experiment. Um, I'm feeling a little self-conscious about this because I've never actually demoed Zoom in this way. It is okay to fail. It is okay to make mistakes. And if what you try doesn't work, try something else. Do try to have a backup plan, but my best advice to get over some of this overwhelmingness is to practice. I know we're limited on time, um, but anything that you can do to allow yourself space to practice is going to benefit you. And I would encourage you to have a practice session with your students also. Just invite them in as an optional. Come, check it out, see what it's like test your mic, get a feel for what it looks like. And that way, when you're ready to do something with students that counts, like if they have to show up and share their screen and do a presentation for you, because some of you may have students presenting using Zoom later in the quarter, um, make sure that you've given plenty of opportunities for low risk practice, not just for your students, but also for yourself. So um, maybe um, meet with a group of faculty from your program or your department um, or cross discipline, whatever works with you, but find some colleagues to come into your Zoom room and practice being participants with you and you practice being the host, let them practice being co-hosts, and then go and do it again in somebody else's room so that they can practice. I know we're limited on time, but practicing is what is going to help you get over some of this overwhelmingness. And I know that I'm giving you a lot of information today, but that's why we're recording it so that you can go back and look at these pieces again later. You might want to watch this a couple times if you have time. I, I, I don't know what your needs are, but I'm also going to give you in that course design document and the learn to zoom document, giving you some additional resources and different ways for learning zoom. Zoom has in their um, support center, they have just an area for videos and you can just go and watch. Some of them are like one minute or less. So, I mean, it really doesn't take that much time. They also have help guides that you can use. So, um, I would just say breathe, try not to stress, do take some time for self-care, and know that you are not alone. That's probably one of the biggest things, is to know that you're not alone in this. Um, be supportive of yourself and be supportive of others, and we just need to, you know, figure this out as we go. But it really is, really, really, really is okay to make mistakes. And there's some really beautiful there's some beautiful stuff happening in the chat right now. <laughs> um, Kate uh, reminded us that this is how our students feel. And oh, yeah. I think one of the biggest things this can do for all of us is to give us so much experiential empathy for our students. Um, and Joe also wrote, have them help you. Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I just think all of this, <laughs> all of the things. <laughs> And, and, I, and to Alyssa and I have really learned the hard way with this, like when we first started using, I think back in the day we were using Collaborate, you know, this is like back in 2013, we made so many mistakes, it was so uncomfortable. Um, like people, like, like people's mics aren't working or our mics aren't working and people can't hear. Um, so, and what Alyssa said about the deep breathing, I just wanna say, just before you do anything, take a deep breath, because if you don't breathe, there's no oxygen going into your brain. I know it sounds simplistic, but you really can't think when there's no oxygen going to your brain. <laughs> so even though it sounds simplistic, breathing helps. We have actually reached our noon end time, but for anyone who wants to stay here with me, I would love to hang out with you. I still have a bunch of features I want to show, and I'm gonna show them whether anybody stays here or not, just so that we can get them in a recording. Anybody who needs to go ahead and leave now, thank you for coming. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and um, leave the meeting now, it's totally fine, and come back and watch the tail end of the recording to see what you might have missed. I'm sorry that we didn't get to everything in the two hours. I just don't like to go so fast that we can't let some of it sink in. And I also want to work with the tools enough that you feel like you're getting some practice. 
And I'm so sorry. I have to run to another meeting okay. about streamlining our messaging. Okay. Which <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so That's everyone, fine. um, there is one question about um, dragon dragon dictation with Zoom, and okay. to that person, I, I just I just don't know the answer yet. And so I don't either. Jerry Lewis, do you? Jerry Lewis might, um, but I think for that person, I would just need to know a little bit more. Yeah, I just I just don't know, and I'm so sorry that I don't know. I hate not knowing. <laughs> it's all right. We can, we can find answers to stuff. And maybe some of the questions we didn't get answered, I could do it up in FAQ and attach it to um, those Zoom resources so that we have everything all in one place. Thanks, Alyssa. And also, I just wanted to say really quickly, I'm going to abuse my privilege as a co-host and just say that it means so much to me to see this many people on Zoom and to be in community with all of you. And Alyssa, thank you for hosting us. Thanks for being thanks. the community thanks. organizer around this. Yeah. All right. Okay, love you well, all. Well, thanks, Jen, for your help. Um, I think Monique, I think she said she had to leave. Uh, Andy, are you able to hang out with me and co-host for just a little bit longer? Yeah, I'm still here. Yep, awesome. Okay, so if you can just um, fill in where um, the gaps were, Jen and Monique. Thanks, Andy. Um, for them not being here. Um, because once I start back into the demo, it's harder for me to see the chat. So if you just keep your eye on that, um, that'd be great. Uh, I do see a hand up from Greg Jordan. Greg, did you want to take the mic and ask a question? Okay, uh, Greg, we'll come back to you. If um, you do have a question, go ahead and throw it into the chat for us. Emily, same for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, walk you through screen share real quick. Uh, there was a question, can we do screen sharing before we end? And um, the answer is yes, that was actually next up on the list. We had screen share, um, breakouts, and um, polling left and also the file sharing. Um, but file sharing wasn't working for me earlier and Jen just left, I was gonna have her share the file. So we'll see if that's working for me um, when we get there. And then the other thing I wanted to show was the whiteboard and the annotation tools. Okay, um, looks like I lost my pointers. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. Let's see. I lost your screen, how do I get it back on? Um, let's see, maybe I stopped screen sharing. No, I didn't. Um, you can click on um, the escape button to get out of full screen. It's hard for me to say because I'm not sure what you're seeing right now. You should see my view of Zoom. So you should see the participants panel, uh, the Zoom group chat, and then um, on my screen right now it says Paula Costco. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, looks like we have another hand up. I'm not sure if these are hands from earlier, if they're questions. Um, Renau or Renoa, did you have a question? Okay, well, if you have questions and your hand was up, put those in the chat for us. We'll come back to it. I am going to go ahead and show the screen sharing option right now. If you'll go down to your Zoom toolbar, uh, you'll need to click on screen share. It's a little green rectangle with an arrow in it. And once you click that, it will pop up all of the options you have for sharing. Right now I'm sharing screen one. You can see that I also have a secondary monitor screen two. Um, that would be one tip I would give you if you're able to have two monitors when you're being the host in Zoom, that is helpful because you can drag toolbars and things off to the side. Uh, this is where you could choose to share your whiteboard and you could also choose to um, share your iPhone or your iPad. You would have to have a special cable for that. You have to have your phone um, connected to your computer, but that was one I discovered yesterday. And then you can also share by um, like program or um, application. So um, if I wanted to share just Chrome, I would choose this one. If I wanted to show my calendar, I could go here. 
But earlier, um, I was just choosing to show screen one because everything I was showing you was on screen one. I am going to choose the whiteboard right now, though, because I'm going to pop us into whiteboard mode real quick. And that's going to change what you see. You are going to um, see just a big blank screen. And let me drag this off to the side. Okay, I'm going to enlarge this so it takes up the full screen. And then um, when you are in screen sharing mode, you get this other little menu at the top that has other options on it. And um, this shows all the different things. So if I wanted to go to breakout rooms right now, I could, um, there's just different closed captionings, recording, different things that are on here. And then um, also for me, and hopefully for you, the annotation tools popped up. So um, here is where you can choose, you can type something, and you can draw. Okay, I'm not drawing anything in particular. There are just different tools in here. You can leave a star. Please feel free to try this as I'm talking. This is just an empty whiteboard. Just try the tools, see how it works. This is the spotlight tool that I had turned on earlier, okay? Where you can follow my mouse. I'm actually gonna leave that one on. As oh, the mm. host, I can clear all of the drawings. So I'm just gonna clear everything, but that doesn't mean you can't um, play. Yep. Yep, nice smiley face. All right, if you want to change your color, I'm going to try purple because purple is my favorite color. And then I have, um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when I click share screen, it says you cannot start screen share while the other participants uh, is partic participant is sharing. That's correct because that's a setting that we talked about earlier that I have it set that nobody can override my screen share as a host. So yeah. you can't actually screen share while I'm screen sharing. Oh, I see. But if you want to hold on for just a minute, um, I will, when people are done playing with this tool, I will stop my screen share and um, give you co host privileges if you'd like. And then or actually, you don't even need that. You can share as a participant. So um, as soon as we're done with this, if you want to um, give the screen sharing a try, we can do that. Because that was actually something I was going to do while we were um, here. Thank you. Would you feel comfortable doing that? I will try. Okay. I, don't think, I don't think so, but I should try. OK. And what's your name? Rina. Are Rina? You, yeah, and the uh, O is for my last name. Oh, my okay. Yeah, I was reading it all as one word. Okay. All yeah, right. So, Rena, we'll come back to you in just a minute. Okay. Oh, Rina, let's. There's some let's, folks that are um, wondering how they can draw on the whiteboard because they don't seem to be able to. Uh, they don't have the tools. Okay, my toolbar popped up automatically. I would say, because um, I'm in, I'm in the host view right now. Um, maybe we could have a participant share where they found it. I think it's probably along the participant toolbar at the bottom. So, yeah, I had, I, I was like, where is it? Where is it? So if you look up at the top, you're, it, you, there's a little bug saying you're viewing Alyssa's cell screen. Under view options, you click on that view options and the annotate is the selection. Okay, so I guess participants have to select annotate on their tools. Yeah. Okay. Thank you under, for clearing under that view up. Under op, view options. Okay. I've not actually used this tool from um, the par participant perspective, so I wasn't sure where that was going to show up. So thank you for that. We've got a lot of creativity going on here. <laughs> Looks like we're having some fun. Okay, I'm going to keep my spotlight on. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing the whiteboard and I'm going to clear this off. I'm going to clear all the drawings and I'm going to ask you um, to refrain from drawing anything else so we don't have annotations all over um, the screen share. So um, thank you for practicing with me. That looks like you all had a lot of fun with that one. Okay, um, how I've used something like this in the past, I didn't do it with the whiteboard. Um, and I, I haven't had a chance to test it in Zoom, but way back when Jen and I were doing a webinar, we put up a picture of Washington and we had our participants um, use like the stamp tool to stamp where in Washington they were. 
So you could use this um, as um, either a teaching tool, like to annotate, or you could use it as uh, like an icebreaker tool. So um, there's lots of different applications. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear all of this. So back to a plain white screen. And I am going to drag my tools off to the side. And I'm gonna go right here to um, stop sharing. And um, I'm gonna stop my screen share. Okay, could we have everybody stop, sh stop drawing, please? Thank you. Okay, I know that was so much fun, it's hard to refrain. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then I'm gonna let Rena take the um, lead on sharing and I'm gonna let her share her screen with us and let her practice that. Okay, so I've stopped sharing. Mm -hmm. And Rena, if you're ready, if you'll just go down to the toolbar at the bottom uh -huh. um, and click on the green share screen option. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it should pop up a window for you to um, let you choose what you want to share. And then as soon as you make a selection from that, um, go ahead and click, I think it's probably share. It's a button in the lower right. And right. then um, it will start the screen share. And we have you there. Okay, so we have your browser and it says Zoom. Uh -huh. So that's how you would screen share. No, oh, I see. Um, but now what do I need to do? Stop. Well, I don't know. It depends on what you would um, want to do. Um, right now, you're just a participant, so you don't have all of the host okay. uh -huh. features. But if you wanted to open a PowerPoint, you could choose to show PowerPoint slides here. Mm -hmm. You could have chosen the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. You know how I shared my slides earlier? I shared from Google, but you can share from PowerPoint and run a slideshow. That's actually how I usually do it. I just happen to be working in um, Google last night, so I just ended up with Google Slides. Um, but you can screen share a variety of things. Like if you wanted to give students a tour of your Canvas classroom, mm -hmm. you could take them and log into Canvas, open your classroom, and then you could walk them through how your class is organized. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Okay. No, I got it. Thank you. You got it. All right, go ahead and stop your screen share then. And um, I'm going to take the screen share back. Does anybody else want to give that a try before um, we go on to another tool? Yes, I would love to. Okay, R Larita? Yes. Yes. Okay, Larita, um, do you feel confident that you can do it on your own or do you need me to walk you through it? Um, I think I'm going to try it. Okay. All right. I'll be quiet. You, you let me know um, when you might need some help. Okay. I'm going to just kind of talk my way through it. I'm going to click on this. I don't need to click on screen share because you've already done it, correct? No, you need to click on the green screen share okay. icon. All in right. The toolbar. I'm going to go um, whiteboard. No, I want to. If you want to share a whiteboard, you can. I would like to bring up Word to like I'm going to demonstrate to my students. Okay. So would I do whiteboard? Um, no, you would want to open Word and probably what you need to do is share your main monitor. So probably it's the first choice in the upper left. And then that would allow you to go and open Word. If you already had Word opened on your computer, it would show up as an application that you could share just Word. Okay, so I'm in screen sharing. Just click screen or don't do anything. Um, under screen sharing, um, probably, do you have two screens or one? I have one. Okay, so it's probably the one in the upper left that just says screen one or screen. Okay, you're already there or someone's already there. Yeah, I, oh, am I still sharing? Um, I thought my screen share picture. was turned off. Yeah, it has a picture of someone. Okay, well, you should be able to click on it. So just go ahead and open it up and click on the screen and then, um, after you choose what you're going to share, then you have to click on the blue share button. It says okay. you cannot share, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it? Mm, I, oh, that's your video. I'm, we're not sharing video, so you oh. should be fine on that. Oh. I can see your screen. Were you also open to um, a browser with Zoom? Okay. I'm on gonna, it? On yes. Fire, are you in Firefox? I am in Chrome. Oh, you're in Chrome, okay. Okay, right. so just go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Word. Yep, go ahead and click on Word. Okay, and I'm just gonna do a blank screen. Okay, 
I'm not and seeing anything change yet. You, have you seen the screen? Do you see the screen? Um, I do see the screen, but I'm not sure if it's still Rena's screen or not. Well, I, okay, I just minimized it. So, um, yeah, I'm not seeing the screen change. The Scrivener screen. That's whose screen is being shown. Oh, somebody else has the um, screen share on right now? No. Okay, so um, Dee Scrivener, if you want to give this just a quick practice, I'm going to have you turn yours off so um, Larita can do her practice. And I don't know, maybe as the host I can turn it off. This will be a learning experience. Let me see if I can stop the screen share. Um, stop participants sharing. Okay. Um, Dee Scrivener, did you want to practice anything while we're here? It's off now, so. It's off now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, it's, um, it's still on. I'm Hi, this is Colleen. I, I um, took it off. So I okay. can see you on my monitor now, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so should I start again? Or? Yeah, you should start over. Okay, so then go back to share screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the person is still there, so it looks like a um, very attractive lady with the glasses, so I'm assuming that's you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I click screen, hit share. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. And then on the lower right, there's another button you have to click that says share. On the lower right, there's another button I have to hit that says share. Yeah, once you choose what you're going to share, then you also have to click the, it's like a save button, but it says share. You already did it. Sharing, yes. Oh, I already okay. did it. Oh, okay. okay. So All right. now I'm going to open up Word. There we go. Yay, oh, somebody, there, there it is. Okay. okay. So yep. then up at the top, I see my tools. I see. Yep. Um, okay. So then if I'm going to talk to my students, I would say, you know, identify. Here's the tools um, on the, well, here's the tabs. Then I can click on, well, yep, I can click on the various tabs. And you guys can see what I'm doing? Yep. I see everything you're doing. The one practice that I would tell you to consider while you're doing this, this is a, this is one of my practices that I find helpful, is if you could enlarge the view for everybody. So if you go into your view and make that larger so that we could see your text better. I know you haven't typed anything. There you go. Use the zoom or the enhance. Yeah, I'm going to go down here and just make my screen larger here. Okay, you still can't see the icons though larger. I think they are pretty much yeah, they're pretty standard, but I can actually see it better now than it was before. So um, okay. just make sure that you're using a large enough font and that you have it zoomed in far enough that people right. can see what you're doing. There was a question in the chat about somebody had to leave soon, but they were wondering if there's a way to toggle the view so that the screen share is on the smaller screen and not the larger screen. Okay, so that's the side by side view, I think that they're asking about. Okay, and... so I'll close out. Oh, it's okay. You can keep practicing. We do have somebody else who wants to practice a PowerPoint. So okay. if, you're, if you've done enough, then we'll... Um, yeah, I do, yeah, I think so. I think I'm, I'm going to play around with it. The okay. only thing is, how will I get feedback from someone else? I'll have to connect with another faculty to um, see if we can play around with each other. Yeah, you should practice this before you do it with students. And then the, one of the things I like to do is have another person in the room who can ask, act as the co-host. Because when you're in screen sharing mode, you're usually in full screen and you can't always see your chat and your participants tools. So it helps to have somebody else like we had Andy and Monique and Jen in here answering questions for me as I was right. demoing things. Right. So if you can have another teacher or even show a student how to do it, you could even have a student co-host. Oh, great. My work study, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, or a TA or somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, you could, you know, just have somebody else in there as um, like your backup plan. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. I'm excited. Thank you so great. much. You are so welcome. All right. I think it was Amelia who asked first. I'm not sure. Um, but Amelia, if you're still here and would like to try bringing up your PowerPoint, um, please go ahead and do that. Um, Larita, just make sure that you've turned off your screen share. You got it. Good job. All right. Um, Amelia, if you would like to take the helm. Oh, it looks like Annette beat you to it. So Annette's going to do a screen share here real quick. I'm going to let one or two more people do this, and then we're going to go on to um, a couple more things because we have um, a few more tools I want to look at with you. 
Okay. Oh, that was a quick practice. All right. Anybody else? Amelia, did you want to take a turn? So Alyssa, one, one person asked if there was a way that they can take over control when somebody's sharing. Um, I, I know that I've done that in the past in, in Zoom where you can request control. Is, is that a setting that's just for moderators? You know what? I don't know for sure. There were some settings in the account settings we were looking at. There is a remote option. The host should always be able to go back and regain control. Um, I do have my room set that if I, um, I'm the only person that can share over somebody else, which is why um, Lorita wasn't able to share at the same time that somebody else was sharing. Well, this question, I have it set so participants can't overwrite each other. This request was if, if let's say, for instance, I share my screen with you, you're the moderator, you can request access and control my screen so that you can move my mouse. Yeah, there is an option in there. It was um, one of the request remote control. It's not one I've ever, ever used. So we would definitely have to um, practice it. I can't give any advice on it right now because I've never used it. It's great for if for um, remote support. So yeah, like, I could see like that. students students are having a problem, you know, and you're you spend a lot of time going back and forth. Do you see this? Do you see that? Uh, what if you click on this and then? But if you get the if you if you request remote control, then you can just go look for what the problem is yourself. Yep, that's that's an excellent usage for that, and it's a tool I would have to um, practice using. Um, I don't know who's sharing right now, but do you need any help? Or are you feeling confident in what you're doing? Um, oh, it is Amelia. Amelia, do you need any assistance? Or are you doing all right? I, I I do need help. I've I don't know if I lost Zoom. I always uh, my PowerPoint. I can see that you are trying to open a PowerPoint called "Who Discovered Welding." Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Just I think double click on that, and it should open for you. And apologies if you just heard our dog's squeaky toy in the background. He came in and squeaked, I think, his elephant at me. Okay. But um, <laughs> where do I, how do I get back to Zoom, though? Um, well, you're screen sharing, so you don't need to be in Zoom. Okay. You're going to, we should, once you open your PowerPoint, if you chose to um, share the screen that your PowerPoint is on, we should be able to see it as soon as you open it up. Okay. And then you would go through your PowerPoint. I would I would recommend putting it in slideshow mode. Okay. So that you don't have um, all of the tools and everything around it like you would when you're like building your slides. Okay. I typically use um, the slideshow view. And then you do lose access or you lose the visual of Zoom. So when you're sharing, what you're seeing is your full screen. Okay. And then um, you can pull your chat and your participants panels and things off to the side if you have a secondary monitor. Um, but usually along the bottom, um, probably below your Zoom toolbar, you have another tray of tools for your computer. And there should be an icon there that it looks like kind of like a blue square with rounded circles with a, like rounded edges on it. And it has a little camera in the middle. Mm -hmm. And if you click that, it would um, probably pop you back into Zoom. Okay, so how would I, okay, so I only see my PowerPoint. How would I communicate with my students, like if they're chatting, if all I see is my PowerPoint? Um, well, that's where having a co-host is advantageous okay. and showing people how to like raise their hand. And then um, if you open your, if you go down to your menu and make sure that your chat is opened, when you're in full screen, it usually pops up, um, a menu item that you can pull and drag off to another area. If it doesn't and you only have the one monitor, then you would kind of have to go back and forth. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. I got. It. And then did you open your PowerPoint yet? Because I'm I'm only still seeing your file manager. Yeah, I have my PowerPoint open. Okay, open. why don't you check? Um, can you go back to, to click on screen share again and tell me what you chose to share if you chose to share your screen or if you chose to share your uh, PowerPoint specifically? Yeah. I'm just wondering why it's not going through and showing us your PowerPoint. 
I, I tracked you to a certain point and I know that you were successful in screen sharing, but I did not see your PowerPoint come up. Okay, so I'm here in my screen share. Mm -hmm. And so what should I do now? Okay, so you open screen share. Do you see an option to share your screen? There we go. Okay, now I have your desktop. Okay. And so now I think if you open PowerPoint, it should take us to um, your PowerPoint. Okay, I saw it there momentarily. This one? Yep. If you open that window, there you go. Now expand that all the way open. There's a little square in the top right. Yep, open that up. Okay, and then from here, what you would want to do is go to the slideshow view. And I love that this is a welding PowerPoint. That's awesome. Okay, and then um, from here, you can just be in presentation view and go through your presentation. I have a full page view of your slides right now. Okay, so okay. How, do, how would I exit this without exiting Zoom? Because I have a, I have a horrible time exiting everything okay. and I end up closing the whole, I mean, all the apps. And I don't as know. long as you don't le press leave meeting, you should be okay. Okay. And don't click on any red X's. <laughs> I have a red X at the top of my screen to close things. And then you also in your a Zoom menu, you have end meeting. So okay. if you want to get out of PowerPoint, you can just close PowerPoint. And then when you're ready to stop sharing, if you go to the top of your screen and hover kind of over the top, a little menu should pop up. And do you see where it says stop share? Click yeah. on that and it will pop you out of the sharing. Oh, okay, now I'm back in sharing. Okay, I'm okay. done sharing. You're done? Okay, I think for time's sake, we're gonna move on. That was an awesome experience. Um, I'm glad you, some of you got to have a practice doing that. Um, I wanna practice the breakout rooms with you right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and screen share so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, hold on just a second. Okay, let me, I'm going to take over the screen sharing. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen one. Okay, so hopefully you're all seeing my screen share again. And what I want to talk to you about real quick are breakout rooms. And um, those options are going to be um, under more. And um, again, this is one of those buttons that we had to toggle when we were in our account settings. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, I clicked on more because my, uh, I have my chat and my participants panel open right now. So my Zoom toolbar is a little bit condensed. So I clicked on more and I'm going to uh, choose breakout rooms. Okay, and this is going to, we still have 118 people with us. If I choose one room, it's just going to do um, one room with all 118 of us. Well, that's not going to be very effective. So um, as I go through here, I can choose how many rooms I want. And as I do that, this number down here changes. And I can see with four rooms, that's still 30 participants. That's a lot of people in a breakout room for small group discussion. So I would keep going here until I got it down probably to five to eight people in a room seems pretty reasonable. I think you can do up to, I think it was 49 breakout rooms. So I really could divide this up into a lot smaller groups if I wanted to. And then, uh, sorry, my cat sneezed behind me. Um, if you heard a little coughing in the background there. Okay, and then I would click on create rooms. And then um, from here, I can see who's going to go into which room. And then I would click open all rooms. And so this is how you would do this if you I'm were sorry. the I'm um, host. Yes, question? Yeah, if we, do, if we don't have that more thing, I'm not seeing a place to do it. And um, a lot of us are asking on the chat and it's not getting through. I'm just Okay, that's because you, none of you are hosts right now. You're gonna have, you're seeing me oh. do it, but you can't do it right now because you're not the host of the room. So you're experiencing this right now as a participant. I'm sorry, I wasn't clear about that. I just wanted to show you how to set it up. And then we actually are gonna do a quick activity in our breakout rooms. So um, I'm gonna close this for just a second because um, I want to go over to um, my slides and I wanna grab the question that I want you to discuss while we're in the breakout rooms. So let me go back to Chrome. 
and um, let me go into my present mode. And then I just need to snag the um, activity. Okay, so let me drag this little thing off the screen here. All right, so this is our breakout room discussion. Um, I think let's just try five minutes instead of 10 minutes since we're already over time. So the two questions um, I want you to just take a minute to talk about with whoever you end in your end up in your breakout room with you are, how are you planning to use Zoom? And which to face to face classroom or business activity, oops, typo there, um, are you most wanting to adapt to Zoom? So this is what the question is. I'm gonna snag this question for you real quick. I'm gonna put it into the chat and then, um, there is a tool for me to, um, I think it's called broadcasting. I can broadcast a message to each room, but I'm not sure that it ends up in your chat or where it ends up. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna paste this information into the chat and I'm gonna ask for um, whoever can grab it before we get to the breakout rooms, um, just to copy what's in the chat so that you have these questions with you while you're in that room. I haven't worked out all the little details of being able to um, like have participants have access to the slides and whatnot. So again, how are you planning to use Zoom and which face-to-face -face classroom or business activity are you most wanting to adapt to Zoom? So let me just snag the text for this. And um, I'll put that into the chat for you to copy. And then if you can just grab it uh, before you, I put you into the breakout rooms, um, then you'll have that to paste into the chat when you get in there. Okay, I just wanna make sure everybody's clear on what we're doing. So um, I'm gonna put this into the chat right now. Pasting it in there, you can see, um, what I'm doing, I'm just going to use the breakout rooms right now for small group discussion. And I've put the two questions into the chat for you. Could I get um, a thumbs up or a yes check button that um, we are good to go to do this, that you're all feeling all right? It's a little bit of an experiment here. How do I get to the breakout rooms? Um, I will send you there. You don't need to do anything as the participant. I will open those up and send you um, everyone there um, here in just a minute. And you can watch me do that, okay? All right, I do have one hand up from Marty. Did you have a question or are you just giving me the, the yes? Okay, so I've got nine thumbs up and 15 yeses and a hand up. So I'm gonna take that as an, it's an okay to proceed. Again, your questions are, how are you planning to use Zoom? Which face-to-face -face classroom or business activity are you most wanting to adapt to Zoom? I'll give you um, five minutes to talk about that with whoever you end up in your group with. And um, it will automatically bring you back to me when that five minutes is up. There is an option once you get into your breakout room um, down in your toolbar where it says leave meeting right now, it will say leave breakout room or return to main room. If you're finished with your conversation before the five minutes is up, please go ahead and exit that and come back to the main room. And for anyone who's watching the recording after the fact, um, please just fast forward about five minutes for when the breakout rooms have ended. Okay, I'm going to show you how to set the breakout room up again, and then I'm going to send you into the breakout rooms. Okay, I'm under more. I'm going to choose breakout rooms. And then um, this is this saved, I think, the breakout rooms that um, I had designated earlier. And um, there's about nine people in each room. It does look like the captioning is going to get moved to one of the rooms and that's fine. Um, you can just keep typing in there if you'd like. Um, we will lose captioning in the other breakout rooms because we only have one transcriptionist today. And then this is also here where you could exchange people to move to a different room or um, move between the rooms as the, as the host. Okay, I have options down here I can choose. 
I need to set this for five minutes. So I'm setting for five minutes. At the five minute mark, you're going to get a countdown timer for 30 seconds. And that's your warning to wrap up your conversation and that it's gonna bring you back to me. And um, I do have the button checked that you can return to the main session at any time. And then I've got some other things set for myself just to notify me when time is up. If I wanted to make changes to my rooms, I would do that here. And um, I think since we're only gonna do five minutes, I think I'm gonna do some little bit smaller groups. Let's do, um, let's do five or six in a room. So we're gonna have 20 separate rooms, so 20 separate conversations. And then when you come back, I'm gonna ask a few of you to report in um, just real quickly, either in chat or by taking the mic about what you talked about, all right? Um, so I'm gonna recreate these rooms and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and open those rooms now and turn you loose on the chat. Okay, ready, set, go. Hello. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to plan. I'd like to put the PowerPoint. That's what I'd like to know how to do. Okay. That's the thing that you most want to learn how to do in yeah. Zoom. Okay. Yes. All right. Who else? I'm not sure. Let's see. Who else is in our breakout room with us? This is Darlene. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm the special assistant to the president. And so um, for Zoom, I'm, I'm on here. Um, I'm gonna be using it to schedule meetings for her and was curious about how um, I can do that. And I think that I figured that out just from listening um, okay. to make her a co-host who will accomplish that where I won't, don't have to attend. Uh, and, actually, you'll want her to be the host um, because uh, she can't, well, co-hosting is okay, but there are a little bit of differences between the tools. Um, there's a feature you should check out in the um, account settings of Zoom where you can schedule for somebody else. Okay. I don't and, know how to use it, but there is a feature in there. And I just go on to my Zoom and... Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Okay, who else wants to take a turn? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, <clears throat> so the two questions. Um, uh, most of my Zoom sessions that I'm planning to uh, organize uh, will be about discussions. Okay. And uh, do some summaries of my uh, lectures to the students. And then I also allow them to ask questions uh, where I can answer them, where every student can hear my answers. And uh, all of this will be done around the source 101, which is introduction to sociology course. Okay. So just a basic course. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Who else is in our room with us? This is Alyssa. You, I got put in your room, so who else is in here with mm -hmm. us? This is Kathy from Grace Harbor College. Hi, Kathy. Hi. I um, teach developmental reading, and so I'm just learning Panopto. Um, okay. But what I would like to do is for the entire class to look at um, paragraphs and passages and pick out uh, different components like main idea and um, you know, supporting details and, and um, just have that kind of thing. Um, and also um, to have students to um, comment on, like we're, we read essays, we read all kinds of material. And so to have students um, be in discussions around those kinds of things. Okay, I think um, something like the breakout rooms might work for you if you're gonna put them into small groups because they have access to screen sharing. I think if you could teach your students how to use the annotation tools and maybe how to screen share um, their paper or a whiteboard, that they would be able to talk through a paper um, within their little session. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. And also, I had a question about that. How do you as how would I as an, an instructor, do I go through the chats then? Um, because I can't be in six different rooms at a time, for example. Yeah, you can't. What you would do is um, 
use the feature for um, hosts to be able to go in and out of rooms. So you would just walk around, mm. walk in quotation marks around your virtual rooms the same way that you would walk around a classroom and listen in. Okay, and then I can save the chat. So if I wanted to look at the, the specific instru or um, discussions, I could do that. Or I You can, can save the chat, but I'm not sure that it saves the, saves the chats for the individual rooms. Okay. So, so we would need to do a little investigation on that. All right, that's great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, have we all shared? I'm not sure who else is in here. So I'm ha I, have, um, I have my main view of the main room and normally it doesn't put me in a breakout room. So I don't know what I checked that was different that threw me into the breakout room, but usually um, the teacher stays in the outside of the breakout rooms and then the teacher can join and move. Like I could move rooms right now, but I'm not because I'm participating in this particular conversation. So can you show us where you go from room to room? Um, I'm not sure if I can. Um, I'm not. Can you see the panel that I just put up on the screen? Yes. You mean with the names? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think it's just this button here right now. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and close the breakout rooms here in just one sec, but um, I think it's just this join button. I think that it will ask you if you wanna join that particular room and that's how you can move through the different rooms. Thank you. I'm not gonna do it now though, because it's gonna throw me into a different room if I choose a different breakout room. But that's, I Thank think you. that's the feature right there that you want. Okay. Okay, and then down here is the broadcast message to all. You can type something there and broadcast it into the individual rooms, but I'm not, I don't know how that feature works from the participant side. So, all right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close us out because our time's up, up for the breakout rooms. Um, and then I'm gonna bring us all back to the main room. So thanks for the chat, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I've closed the breakout rooms and um, for anyone that's not already here, um, in 15 seconds, you'll all be forced back into the main room. Thank you. Yep, nice to meet you all. We had a couple of questions in our breakout room. One is, are the breakout rooms recorded? And the second is, can the moderator pop into different breakout rooms? Yes, the moderator can pop in and out of um, the breakout rooms. Um, and I actually did show that to the breakout room that I got popped into, but it's not a feature I can show you without being in a breakout room. So let me, um, let's do an experiment real quick because I want to show you how to do that. If I recreate my rooms and I change this to one room, um, it should put us all in the same room. So um, let me, let me just let, I'll leave it for five minutes. I don't think we'll stay in there that long. Um, but let me open that and see if I can demo that feature. Okay, so I think that we have all been put into a separate breakout room. Can you verify that you're in here with me? You need to click the join button. Oh. Yep, no problem. Just click that join button. Okay, so for those that chose to click the join button and are in here with me, when you have your breakout room set up, like if I had multiple breakout rooms like I had before, I would have the name of the room and then I would have um, a list of the name of the students that were in that room. And then this uh, in the upper right corner, there is a join option. And if I click join here, it will allow me to go between rooms. I'm pretty sure that that's, um, see how when I clicked that it said, um, do I wanna join breakout room one? Well, yes, it's the only breakout room we have. So, um, but you would be given the option of the room that you wanted to join if it was room two or room three or room five, but that's where that feature is. I'm gonna go ahead and pop us back to the main room because some people didn't choose to, to join us.
and it will, um, nice. there's, I, I do have on? the countdown on, so in about 20 seconds, it's going to pop you back to the main room. I have it's, a quick question. Yeah. What is it? Um, when uh, students are uh, breaking into different rooms, uh, uh -huh. do we decide or they decide who's going to host or who's going to coordinate that meeting? Um, you would want to pre-coordinate that. There is, um, I just used the automatic feature. It just um, divvied everybody up randomly. Um, but you can, there is another feature in your Zoom settings that you can go in and you can um, choose to um, upload a CSV file where you can predefine who's going to be in which group. And then if you know for sure that you're going to want somebody to host a particular group, you might want to have a quick meeting with those people prior to so that they understand what their duties are as a host. Like if you're going to have like a student group leader when you're in those discussions, you would want to have some separate information for um, those people so that they knew what they were supposed to do to help direct the conversation while they were in the breakout rooms. Hey, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Are we good on breakout rooms? Hi, Lisa. Yes. When I yes. Went, so a, a group of us went when it said join breakout room when you had us all go into the same room oh. and you click on that button, it took us into a room where you weren't. And so there were lots of people saying, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And then somebody said, wait, is this what's happening? And so then if you clicked, if I clicked um, to return to the main group or whatever, mm -hmm. then that's where you were. So I think there's a group of us that didn't hear, we weren't present in the room. Yeah, I saw that, that some people didn't um, join the room. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, it should have put all of us into a breakout room together, but maybe um, doing it that way, Zoom recognizes that you're already all in a room together. So I'm not really sure what the disconnect was on that. But when I did that, there was a button that you should have clicked to join. Um, I could only see one breakout room from my view, so I'm not really sure what happened, but it, it um, was a good experiment. I am so sorry that if you were one of the folks that didn't get put into the room correctly, that you didn't see what I demonstrated. Um, basically, when you're in the room, um, one of the features the host has is um, where the list of um, attendees is once you've created the rooms. You have a blue join option that you click and it will ask you if you want to join that room or not and that's how you move back and forth between the rooms there is a video on the breakout rooms that is linked in the document so maybe go um, watch that if you need a little bit of follow-up on that um yeah so linda i'm seeing that you're still not sure how the teacher can visit the various breakout rooms i'm guessing maybe you were not in the group that ended up where I was at because I did demo that feature. And again, um, it's just an option that the um, host sees once they create the breakout rooms. And I can't show it to you without being with the breakout rooms set up. Um, but there is a little um, link, link. It's a blue, it says join. And it's to the right of the title of each of the breakout room names. And you just click that and it gives you the option if you want to join that room or not. Okay, thanks for joining us, Jerry. I see that you got to run. We've got um, two more features that I want to give a try while we're here and then we'll, I think we'll need to wrap it up for the day because we've done a lot. I really appreciate those of you who are still here staying. Uh, we've still got a great group here. We've still got 91 people. Um, the two features I wanted to talk about are polling and I did show you how to create a poll earlier. I'm actually going to launch a poll right now so you can see what that looks like. And then I was going to give file sharing um, a try again, but I was not able for some reason to make that work earlier. So um, we may or may not get to sharing that. Okay, let's do a poll real quick. Um, I'm going to go down here as the host and I had remember when we were going through the meeting settings, I had the button toggled for polls. So that's what allows polls to show up here in my menu. If you don't see polls or you don't see breakout rooms or you don't see chat or closed caption, it's because you need to go back into your account, into your settings and enable those features. 
I'm going to go ahead and click on polls. And I did put a poll in here last night. And hopefully you're seeing um, a pop up that says, what is your favorite feature? Zoom feature so far. I haven't actually launched this yet. When I launch this, it will become an active um, thing that you can participate in. So as soon as I click this blue launch button, it should pop up for you. And I'll just have you check a box here as to um, which is your favorite Zoom feature so far. Okay, so I launched the poll. So um, go ahead and um, check the box for what you think is the most useful, interesting, favorite Zoom feature so far. And we can um, watch those results. And looks like we've got quite a few people saying screen share. Uh, currently in second place, we have breakout rooms. Okay, it looks like the polling has stopped. So I'm gonna click the end polling button. And then I'm going to share out the results. And when I share the results, that would that's what your participants would see. So that's how our poll ended up screen sharing one by 64% and then second place was breakout rooms with 26%. So that's um, how a poll looks when you're in a session as a participant. And then remember back to way early in the session when I showed you um, where you could create a poll question and where you had to enable that feature. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop sharing this so that it clears it off our screens. Okay. All right, and now we're just back to my view of Zoom and um, we're not going to practice creating poll questions right now because as a host or co-host, um, those are the only people that can create the poll in a room. I know the host can do it. I'm not 100% about um, the co-host, but um, I can't, for example, um, I can't have you all come in and create polling questions right now because we'd have to go back um, you'd have to be, you know, have those permissions enabled. But I did want you to see how that feature worked. Um, the last one I wanted to try was the file sharing. And let me see if I can get this to work. Um, it's not there. I know it's in here. Um, is anyone who's here know how to, to share files? In here, I think maybe this is it. Okay, I so I got it. Um, I did have it enabled. It's down in the chat. Um, at the bottom, I had a file sharing icon here. And um, I'm just going to take you to my desktop because I did have a Zoom file that I was planning to share. So let me just grab that. And you can see that somebody was annotating um, while we were talking. So um, you can see some scribbles on my screen, but that's all right. You can disable the feature for annotation if you um, don't want that in here. Let me just find the file that I was looking for. It's a PDF, there it is. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just share Zoom online event best practices. I'm just selecting this from my computer, clicking on open, and you should now see in the chat that a document was shared with you. And let me just go back and do that other one too. Okay, I had two, these are Zoom resources. These are not um, files that I created. They were things that I pulled off of Zoom's help website. So um, those are both in the chat for you. Looks like one of them, it's taking a little while to download. Okay, there you go. It should be in there. You should just be able to click on it and it should download to your computers. So that's an easy way that you can share files with students or with colleagues as you're running a meeting. I do use Google quite a bit because um, I could open a Google document here and we could all collaboratively type in it. And if I had it shared to my screen, we could see the typing and the collaboration going on. So that's kind of a fun activity to do. And then um, let's see, just as we wrap up here, um, let's um, just go back to the course design um, document real quick. Again, this is the um, document I shared earlier for course design resources. Uh, just come to conferencing and then click here to get to um, the Zoom resources doc. Um, this is a collection of um, Zoom documents that I 
and different references and resources and videos and things that I put together. So please use this. Check back on it. I am going to continue adding to it. I started adding some best practice things at um, the bottom here. Uh, again, I'm not done with this. It's a living document. It's still a work in progress. If you have a Zoom resource you'd like me to add, feel free to um, send that to me. I'm just going to clear the annotations real quick. Let's see if they'll, there we go. Okay, I just used my annotation toolbar to, to clear um, those annotations so that we could um, see the document a little easier. And then I think this, the very last thing to show you would be the Zoom Help Center. So here's, um, and this is linked in the document, but um, this is where you can come to, there's training information, there's um, help sheets in here. This happens to be, this particular screen happens to be a list of um, videos. So if you want a little bit more on um, breakout rooms, um, here's a video here you can watch. There's another one that I linked in the document that I found yesterday. Um, there's someone at Zoom, her name's Farah. And she, I found a couple of really good resources by her. I'm gonna look for a few more, but one of hers was breakout rooms and it was like five or six minutes long so it was a little bit longer than some but if you see a video in my document that says breakout rooms with Farah, then that one goes a little bit more in depth to um, using the breakout rooms okay well i think um i'm just gonna look in the chat real quick and see if there's just anything else that we need to address i see somebody practiced sharing a file so thank you that's awesome and let's just see what else is in here. I'm probably, again, not going to get to answering all of these questions today. I mean, we've been in here for three hours. I think it's um, time to wrap up. But hopefully, hopefully this was a comprehensive view of um, what's in Zoom. And um, I thank you all for attending. I thank my co-hosts for helping out today. Much, much appreciated. So let's see. Is there anything else last minute? um lots of thank yous yep thank you for coming thanks so much oh i know we didn't get to talking about recording um maybe we can do that in a subsequent um session and maybe security issues zoom security issues. oh one thing i will mention just to tag on here for security issues you should not and it has related to recording you should not record any meetings where you might be advising students or talking about sensitive student data do not record any of those meetings and if you are recording um class times um, to be FERPA compliant. You can only share those recordings with the same class. You can't take um, a recording that you've made with section one and share it with section two of your class. You can only share the recording that you've made with the class that <coughs> contains the students that are in the recording. So that, yeah, a couple good things to, to bring up there, yeah. All right, thanks everyone. Um, I will I go one more through. question. Oh, sure, of course, of course. I t I'm, I typed in the uh, chats, okay. and my message doesn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, did you hit the enter after? You need to hit a return afterwards to get it the, posted. The enter on my computer? Yep. Yeah, you have to type your message and then click enter for it to post. I just did it. I just did, and it's still there. Okay, is this Paula? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing it pop up. I'm not sure. Maybe your computer's running a little slow, and it's just taking a little bit of time. But yeah, I'm not seeing yours um, come up. So that might be something um, that you want to look at a little further. Um, you want to give it another try. Is it going privately to somebody? Did you pick everyone from it the says everyone. Menu? No, it says, it says everyone. everyone. Okay, it does say everyone. Okay. Mine's running a little slow right now. There's a little bit of lag time. Um, so let's see. So you're just um, typing your message like that, like what right. I just did, and then right. you're hitting enter or return on your computer? Yes. Okay. So it did mine, but I have not seen yours pop up yet, Paula. I'm Let not me sure. Let me try down here. Oh no. Oh, I, I did my I have it on the um on the box. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure um, why yours isn't working. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. Thanks All right. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Any other last minute items? This one thing, I think it's important to um, make sure people know how to lock the rooms or because people are talking about Zoom spaces being hijacked and profane images being um, um, screened. Okay. So just a few um, protocols that may work for protecting that. Okay, um, I've not ever locked a room. Have you done that before? Yes, yeah, so um, you talked about the ding earlier with the host being able to hear who comes in and out. Mm -hmm. With a small enough group, I make sure either myself or the co-host, they will have um, that auditory cue. Mm -hmm. So in case people's um, um, connections are in state unstable and they have to come in and out, they, I can track that. Okay. And I can unlock it so they can come back in or have a back way okay. to connect so they can come back in. Because once you lock the room, they can't come back in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And yeah. then also the other thing that you mentioned was around screen sharing is you controlling who shares the screen. Um, as the host is also. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's it. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Okay. And then I see a quick question about uh, from May about virtual backgrounds. Um, yeah, that's in your video settings. And um, let me just open that up. And you would choose your virtual background here. Um, I have not been successful getting mine to work. It works better if you have um, like a blank wall or something behind you. When I click on mine, see it only does part of it. So it doesn't really work um, in my room setup right now. So I need to do a little bit of practice with that, but that's where that setting is. How do we actually lock the rooms? Um, you know, I've not ever done that. Um, I think it's back in the account settings that we looked at. Actually, it's as a host. So when you're um, a host or a co-host and you go to where you talked about earlier participants and then you hit the three um, button more and then you would scroll down and okay. you'll see where it says lock room. Let me see if I can see that in here. I've not, oh, is it? Oh, it's on that more menu? Yeah. Okay, I've not ever used it. Oh, there it is, lock meeting. Yep. Oh, cool, thank you. Yep. yep. You're welcome. Um, but there is, there is an account setting that It looks like maybe Alyssa got booted out. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, no, Alyssa, she came back in. OK, okay she's OK. OK. <laughs> yes. So um, I did ex I did get kicked out temporarily. Looks like there's still some people in here. Were there some additional questions? No, could you just finish what you were saying? Because I, I, I think it got cut off mid-sentence. Yeah, um, you all stayed in the room, but my computer um, decided to restart itself. So I just had to log back in real quick from my laptop. And so I was out of the meeting for a minute, so I might have missed a few things. Um, but I'm back now. I think um, we're... We're at the um, three hour mark, so I think we should probably wrap this up. Um, but do watch for um, other training opportunities. I have um, some office hours that are on the SBCTC calendar, and um, those are office times that are open. Just they're just open lab office times to come in and um, you know practice things, ask questions. Um, so maybe. Um, if you need more practice with Zoom, that's something we could do during one of those sessions. And um, I'll, I'll kind of gauge 
like the reaction to this recording and see uh, if we need to do a secondary follow-up practice session might be good for us maybe sometime next week if anyone's interested. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting and um, I'm going to turn off the recording for now. Um, again, thank you all so much for being here. Um, couldn't have done it without you because you need participants um, to run a good meeting and um, thank you again. Um, May, the recording is going to be in the course design document that I shared earlier. And I don't have any of those things opened on this computer because I changed computers real quick because my home computer was um, restarting. But um, if you got that link from earlier, um, you'll be able to access everything from there. It was also linked in the invitation I sent out. So if you had the email invitation, possibly was forwarded to you from someone, it was uh, linked there as well. And then it will go out to all of the e-learning offices. So look for it to come out through your campus wide emails as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and um, stop our recording. And um, 